war is coming. The sorcerer king, Hamanu, Lion of the North, Lord of Uruk, has mustered an army and sent it to attack the city-state of Tyr. This is where our heroes live, so they are understandably a little upset about this turn of events. I mean, they did slay Kalak, Tyrant of Tyr, and saw all of Tyr's slaves freed into the bargain, so just having another Sorcerer King like rock up and take control of the city is not real high on their bucket list. What's more, Hamanu is concealing the approach of his army using something called the Veil of Stone. Not fair. Uh, is this an artifact? Uh, a powerful spell? An enormous hat that looks exactly like a sand dune? It's, it's hard to tell. The party found out about this from the spy Fire Blossom, and also found out that Fire Blossom's mistress, the Lady Diamina, was actually some kind of weird plant construct with milk for blood and cabbages for intestines and I don't know what all. Nobody really knows what the hell that was about, um, to be honest, but we'll hopefully see more of that in coming, um, in coming sessions. But with more eminence, Tyr has other troubles to face. Its former slaves are starving, its nobles are rather cross about their sudden loss of centuries of unearned privilege, and its Templars would really like people to stop lynching them, please, just long enough for them to explain how a city really does need a functioning soul service, okay? As ever, our heroes are at the heart of this strife, struggling to make Tyr a better place for all, and be ready to not die horribly when Hamanu's army finally arrives. A couple of days after your encounters at the Argosy, the long-promised first meeting of the Council of Advisors happens. It's just complete chaos. There's over 300 people in attendance, with voices shouting from all the various galleries of the warehouse that's been converted into, a, into this uh, makeshift meeting hall. Different factions lobbying all day long. But as promised, Matthias, High Templar Herrick of the Bureau of State has scored you a few moments in front of the assembled good and great of the city to make your case about, well, farming and feeding the slaves. What slaves? We don't have slaves here. Former slaves, indeed. The day wears on and you s understandably um, the two main topics of conversation or of debate are the reopening of the mines and the reopening of trade and preparation for the city. On the other hand, these two main ideologies war back and forth throughout the day. It's a long, boring afternoon, finally, with people starting to nod off in the hall, Matthias, that you are shuffled up onto the podium that has been serving for a, uh, a soapbox for the speakers. And uh, you can see Tithian presiding over the council. Ah. <clears throat> I believe our next item is Representative Matthias, who comes with a matter concerning... Food production and distribution. And he leans back and looks at you expectantly. I look around. I'll... How many people here yeah. are hungry? There's a low kind of murmur goes through a good proportion of the crowd. None of you, I can imagine. Um, all happily fed, housed. Obviously, with the slaves being freed, the city needs food. So I propose that we give these former slaves jobs on the lands, on any noble lands that has farms, pay them a wage so we can start feeding this city again. Even, I'd be happy to take some land under the government's name and get some farms set up and have former slaves work in there for food, coin. You worry every day about these people lynching your houses. We see it the other day. I can't remember his name. House Vorden. House Vorden was attacked themselves. This gets a reaction. More than just a little murmur. Heads nodding in agreement. Someone stands. I would like to second the motion here by Representative Matthias. 
for a system of uh, government fields, he gestures towards you, Matthias. I mean, yes, as, as nobles, and I, I, I speak, of course, uh, for the, uh, the House of Agrav, but I'm sure I speak for the rest of you as well when I say that we will be happy to offer meaningful employment to the slaves of this, uh, to the um, free folk of this city. But um, making it something that the government can oversee, that is an excellent decision. This also expands out to the mines. Pay for miners. Get the trade reopened. A point of order. Oh. Who will uh, recompense us when uh, our former slaves go missing? There's a heavily bearded guy on the... Uh, second rank who will recompense you once Uruk's armies come here and slaughter everyone this is not about lying in your own pockets here this is about survival mm. if Tyr wants to survive something must be done Tithian leans forward I think I can put this to a vote. It's a simple question. Our esteemed former senators of the noble families will know that if they do not offer employment to slaves, the city will die. But Representative Matthias is correct. The government must do its part. Vote then on the opening of government fields for share crop use by former slaves of this city. All in favor, aye. There's a chorus for aye from, well, you don't even need to count heads, Matthias, to know it's from well over half of the people present. Okay. The matter is passed. And then he uh, he moves on to a uh, uh, the next debate of the day, which happens to be a uh, very serious trade dispute erupting over the distribution of chitin from three competing families of bug farmers. But we'll skip away from that perhaps tantalizing detail. Uh, Constantine, while the speech has been going on and Matthias has been putting his case to the city, uh, you are in a an adjoining meeting room underneath with High Templar Hyrek of the Bureau of State and uh, Templar Harna from the Bureau of Security. While attention is otherwise occupied, Harna says, we thought it best to get you uh, to get you in here. The work you've done for us as uh, <clears throat> an asset has been invaluable from the start. This matter of Diamina notwithstanding, Harper says, um, we'd like to just clarify with you the nature of that relationship. Because what she's trying to say is we can use you, Herrick says. We still have work for you, and you would be an extremely useful asset to the government. Why should I? Because the city needs sharp fellows like you. And because you'll get your chance at Salivar, Harna says. If he's anywhere, he'll be at the head of that army. So you ask me to give you what could be left of my life to maybe one day get a shot at someone who may, is, has the potential or not to be fortified against me. That is your offer. We're asking you to help Tyr as you've helped her in the past. None of my companions? Um, well, it's quite simple, Hyrick says. You're the asset, they're your resources. Last I checked, the, they were free. Therefore, they're not my assets. 
Oh, yes, uh, if you wish to, um, to split heads, I am speaking metaphorically at least. But at any rate, you don't have to decide right away. I will leave that matter with you to consider. I, as a gesture of good faith to show you that you would always, of course, be treated fairly, I bring to you the answers to the questions you wish us to ask. He looks over at Harna. We uh, questioned Kraybite's corpse. The bard. We tried the same with Diamina, but there was nothing there. An echo of an awareness, but no spirits are pulled back from the grey. But well, from Kraybite... It was it wasn't on. a person. You know, what, what did you think you were going to get from it? Who knows? But it was a hypothesis that uh, we wanted to explore. So from the Bard we learnt that Salivar had hired him to follow Fara Blossom back to Diamina. I understand that she was bait to lead the Bard to uh, your former lady. He knew she was a spy, but we don't think he knows how much she saw. She abandoned you, didn't she? Who abandoned me? Fire Blossom. That's how come you were caught and she wasn't. She had information. I didn't. Yes, hon. She could read. I can't. There's nothing they could pull from me in that regard. Her safety was more important than mine. Obviously, you don't understand strategy. You don't understand tactics. And you just like to have ideas. Make sure the next time you expouse one against someone that I work with, they hold weight. Hyrek actually visibly shuts up. Quite so, Harna says. The information she escaped with was able to bring her to us safely. Um, what we can make out, he let you and your companions live to flush Diamina out. And finally, he wanted Diamina dead, not out of some sense of revenge. Kraybite maintains that he wanted her dead to expose her. But that begs the question, expose her to who? That can only mean us. So what does Salavar gain by exposing the existence of this to us? Well, anyway... Maybe says, just that there's some other player you don't know about yet. Yes. Yes, we're debating so which that with now some intensity. Now, if you were thinking, you'd be worried about a war on two fronts, which could either help you or cloud you to what they're doing actively against you right now. Divide you amongst what you should be doing and shouldn't be doing. Does that make sense for what an enemy would want to do when they're on your doorstep for a war? It does. You see, this is why we need men like you, Constantine. In the meantime, I would ask you to keep an eye out for more of these things. This was made by someone, and there's nothing to suggest they can't make more than one. Has anyone seen her bleed before? It's not something that we have detailed files regarding, if truth be told. It was a passable... Mm. replica of her. If you had seen her bleed or seen something, yes. that would give me something to work with, but right now you're asking me to find smoke near fires. Yes, well, as I think, keep your eyes out. Time. Yes. See what you can learn. And consider my request. He rises. Uh, shall we, Hannah? And hurries out of the room. Hannah stays a moment just regards you in silence and nods, follows Hyrek. And I'll nod the, once they're all gone. Cool. At the back of the, uh, of the warehouse, Bengal Bengal, you're sitting up on a crate of dried Johnny Pear ride, swinging your legs. Tick Tick is standing next to you. He hasn't moved in almost 45 minutes. 
it is not quite the most boring day of your life, but if you have to make a list, number would, two. Yeah. You know the queen don't sleep, but he sure as hell sure looks like he's sleeping. I poke one of his legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, well, you poke one of his legs, it shifts slightly. Uh, uh, Tick Tick, you are being poked. I, I feel duty bound to point out. Um, I just swivel my head to look at the gob and go. Oh, hey. Uh, so what's, uh, what's up? What are you doing? Is this what death is like? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'll, I'll have to find out. Get back to me on that. It, it, crap. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I don't. What is going on? I'm just so bored. Let's just uh, let's do something, huh? Where I mean, are go? You, are you just gonna stand there this whole time? And is that it? Wait. Oh, okay. No. Right. Um. Uh. Wrong word. I was wait. You were waiting? Yes. Ugh. I'm bored of waiting. Ahead yeah. of you, the crowd the crowd parts and We, we go now. Ugh. Rika strolls into view. Oh, thank God. Someone that actually can speak normal. I look got the got the best seats, did you? Yeah. No. What do you mean? You're like eight foot tall. You've got the best seat in the house. I didn't want it. <laughs> mm. Listen, I won't keep you long. I just had a, I had a couple of questions for you. We've been having trouble with some of the gladiators. They're, um, he jokes his thumb over his shoulder. They're fed up with this. They think we should have been weapons high and out into the desert from the minute the word came in of Hamanu's army. Now I've got most of them under control, but it, there are voices here and there. If you run across anybody who is, you know, bad-mouthing the war effort or suggesting that we should just race off into the desert without a thought for tactics, I don't know, um, kill them. Sure. Uh, can I ask, what's your uh, opinion on all this? Because I'll uh, be honest, we need to get something done soon. From behind him, a voice says, don't kill them! It's Neva, with her helmet off, a rare sight. She's alive? Don't kill them, just reason with them. Right? Explain to them how the city needs to prepare. Or kill them. Uh, that, that's much. I mean, why, why are we discussing this? If <laughs> kill, no, no fight. Oh, he got a point. Sorry, man. I'm with Neva on this one. We need, we need fighters. Yeah, and we need to be prepared. But we can't just drag our feet. Tier so, one clutch now. Yeah. yeah. No, a dead gladiator is not good to anyone. So, um, that was my second question. Uh, we've been talking to High Templar Banther about reopening the games, but, um, there's a strong movement for having them be non lethal. Really? And, uh, yeah, I'm, well, that's what I think. Neither too. And we wondered if we could get your support in that, given, you know, who you are. You have my full support. Agree. I'm sure right. Ron would say the same. Game's fine. We need fighters. Well, we might have to find ourselves doing something like this. And he jerks his thumb at the uh, council hall where, you know, figure on soapbox, several hundred people surrounding him. But I'll, I'll bear that in mind. All right, thanks. Neva nudges him. What? Aston? 
No, I'm done with my questions. She kicks him again. Ask them. Okay. Lo lowers his head surreptitiously as if to listen in more closely. The head. Of Shushet? <laughs> bad. You should feel bad. Who is that? <laughs> Head of Kalak. You took it. Right. Where is it? Uh, you'll have to ask to take it. I mean, he did behead him. I am. Oh. He pats you on your head. Well, then take the floor, man, I guess. <laughs> I give it. Good, thank you. When? No, I give it already to someone else. Who? Um, now, Carl, remind me, was it who did I give it to? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Your little people. You gave it to Portek. Portek, yes. I, ga oh. I, I gave it to Portek. Uh, Tortek. Tortek. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, can you ask him to contact me? We really need to keep a, a good track on where that thing is. Okay. All right, thank you. I clack my mandibles. <laughs> he nods in acknowledgement. Um, up at the podium, Tithian is speaking once more. He appears to be taking a tally of which houses are, don are willing to donate troops to the army. A hundred here, five hundred there, a thousand there. Eventually, he comes to House Tirthani, one of the oldest houses in Tir. There's no response. A few moments later, House Minthor, no response. The senators aren't even here. Tirthian's looking a little bit more discomforted. House Turax, he calls for, and now finally there is a response. Senator Turax, um, and I'll pop you a picture of him right here. Yes, that's what he looks like. Yes, he's supposed to. They call them the Majority, which is an ancient type of undead. They say he's older than Kalak. But despite this, his mind remains, by reputation at least, shrewd. Ah, <clears throat> I wish to speak on behalf of not just of my own house, but houses Tirthani and Minthor as well. Before we send our men to die for this city, there are some questions about Kalak's death that must be answered. There's this complete silence in the hall. What questions might those be? Tithian says. Oh, well, Turax continues. The, the Veiled Alliance was involved. I have a non good, good authority. Uh, are they not still illegal here in the city? Huh? Terrorists? Criminals? Oh. Uh, they must be brought to justice. Who, who can say when they next might act if they deem the next legally appointed government in Tyr to be beneath their standards? Uh, we cannot have uh, um, radicals uh, running loose in the ranks. There must be an investigation. And there is an uproar as many, many voices sound their approval, their dismay. Tithian, after a few minutes, gets order restored in the hall. Very well, we will um, discuss this matter at the next session, and let's call a vote, please, on the allowable troop numbers so far. A perfunctory vote is called and passed, approving all troop assignments to the army so far, but within seconds, that's dropped as the subject of conversation, as every group in the... Uh, 
in the uh, the disused warehouse broke off into little knots and start discussing the premier matters of the day. As Tithian strides down from his podium, he pauses for a moment and you can Bengal Bengal and take literally see him lock eyes with uh, with Rikus and nods. Rikus laughs. That's my marching orders. You know what? Why don't you two come along? Where are we off to? Um, we're gonna watch Tithian shit his britches and try not to make it worse for him. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Take, take you in? That means yes. Let's go. Okay, so you follow Rikus as he strides off to one of the lower galleries and uh, some other, other meeting room not far from there. Okay, so um, Matthias and Carodius, uh, you've met up in the crowd. This sudden outcry that surrounds Senator Durax's call for an investigation just sends ripples of confused energy washing all around you. People's faces clearly making it clear they have uh, not expected a uh, yeah, an event such as this. Agis grabs hold of you by your elbow, Matthias, peering through the crowd. This way, come on. I'll follow. He looks back over his shoulder towards you, Carodius. You might as well come along as well. You go over there with them, don't you? Sure. Go on then. Just behave. And um, lead you down into. Well, as it happens, the same side meeting chamber that Rikus was uh, heading to and that uh, Harna has brought you, Constantine. Tithian is already in there, pacing up and down. Ridiculous, ridiculous behavior. He would never have dared something like that if, if Kalak was still with us. He turns to face the rest of you. Right. Seeing as you were the ones that did it, I thought you and your companions might like to be here. We can't have a meaningful investigation. I'm going to start with that. Yes, the Alliance were involved. But the conspiracy went much, much further than that. You saw a good deal of it, I believe, to know exactly what I'm talking about. You have to give Turanx what he wants, I guess says. Hmm. He's one of the oldest, most powerful senators, and if he's gotten the Tirthani on side and the Minthur, that is both the old god and the new god. You can't just decree this one away. You're going to have to face it as a king. <clears throat> he prepared this attack. Turax, Tithian nods, yes. He saw himself, ridiculously so, as Kalak's friend. I can assure you from personal experience, Kalak spent no more than a handful of seconds in any given week thinking about him. But Turax deluded himself into believing he had the king's ear and now seeks to make political capital from his death. Look, um, we need to assign you a special commission. The activities that this little group has been involved in since coming to Tyr has not escaped any of our notice. So, he grabs a a piece of paper from a side table and just fluidly signs it. You are now hereby appointed the Royal Commission, agents of the King. Um, the duties and uh, privileges pertaining thereunto can be requested three weeks in advance um, from the Royal Library. And simply put, uh, try not to kill anyone. How public is this information? That you are agents of the king? Yes. As public as you deem it political for, for it to be. Some prefer to keep their cards close to their chest. I leave that up to you. I just wanted to make sure nobody in your camp was 
giving information out that we didn't want. Almost certainly they are. Nothing can be done about that. There are three three questions here. Um, please talk to the Tirthani, talk to the Minthros, find out what they want, why they've signed up with Turax. Uh, as for Turax and his investigation, bury it. Um, overwhelmed and with evidence. Do this uh, all without killing someone. Hmm? You want us to do this all without killing someone? If you absolutely have to end someone's life over this matter, then do it. This is a life or death situation, yes. If word got out of what exactly happened, it was damaged here seriously. Prefer that you don't, though. Adds more complications. But I don't know. Um, too much evidence, not enough evidence. Uh, corruption. Find a scapegoat to pin it on. I, I don't really care. I just wanted to go away, and I wanted to go out soon. So we should start with isolating them. I don't have the uh, time to go through the nitty-gritty with you, um, Kyrodias. See what the Minthor want, see what the Tirthani want, and find something that will make Turax's little problem go away. As long as it isn't the truth. Uh, this, Agus and Rikus both look really uncomfortable. Do, do you um, uh, know why he asks this? What is he trying to achieve? Does he know already the truth and he's trying to get it into, into the open? or well, Possibly. A po more, more likely, he's just jockeying for personal, personal power mm. and exercising his uh, doleful displeasure at um, his friend's demise. Ah. Why not kill him? Because he's a very powerful and public senator. Mm, yeah. Among other things, yes. <laughs> you are king. Tithian looks like he wants to agree with you. Agus says, yes, but Tithian, remember, is trying to be a new type of king. So you're trying to be a new type of king by having us quietly do what the old king would have had, a, would have had done. I hate to say this, Rika says, but I'm with Tithian. I didn't say I wasn't. I just want to answer to the question I just posed. It's less for me to hear and more for him to hear himself say. Tithian turns and glares at you. I am perfectly aware of what I am asking you to do. <clears throat> she already <And> smiles. <laughs> allow me to correct myself. The truth is, I'm not asking you. He nod, nod, nods at the piece of paper. You have your reward before you have even begun the endeavor. I trust that I can leave this method in your hands. Without waiting for a reply, he turns and stalks away. I guess nods quickly at you and follows after him. You can hear him picking up conversation about the fields almost immediately pleases me <sighs> you should just kill them all Rika says Neva takes him by his shoulder don't kill them all uh, yeah absolutely the meeting room. yeah if you kill them all then there won't be anybody left to warn if somebody else that tries so you're left alone with uh, with Templar Hana from the Bureau of Security Look, I've got nothing to add. She says, you did such a, a solid job with the House Del Argosy. Is Templar Harna the dark-skinned one? Yes. Okay. I can put her picture up for you. So I know this to be uh, something that's within your capacity. There she is. But if there's uh, anything you think you need from me, go ahead and ask. Otherwise, I have other business to be about. <clears throat> Do you have any information on uh, the other two houses? On why they are 
joining uh, our <clears throat> minority senate senator in here. The Tyr Tharni are one of the oldest houses. They were the original thanes of Tyr before Kalak. They're the old guard, and they've seen their power slip away. Uh, the Minthra are the opposite, a young, rising, up-and-coming family. Um, the son, Verassi of Minthor, is a little bit of a laughing stock around town, um, but his dad is stupendously wealthy and has become rapidly wealthy through, um, through um, buying and selling faro. So they don't perhaps have the respect, respect of some of the older, traditionally landed nobility. Um, but they represent a, uh, a younger, hunger breed of noble that the city requires to keep functioning, I'm afraid. Uh, I think it's a bit of a signal. I think he's courted those two in particular, just to show that his influence can go to the high and to the low in his eyes. Mm -hmm. But they'll want something individually, so find out what it is. And um, if we can give it to them, then give it to them. Okay. Right. I'll leave that in your hands then. And uh, she nods, departs. So there's a, a handful of things for you to uh, to consider there. The Minthor family, the Tirthani family, Tarax's investigation, whatever Rikus was talking about with the gladiators being uh, grumbly. Uh, suggesting that you kill them all. The like. A lot of disgruntled people in this town. <laughs> yes. Many. So what do you do? Well, first I think we need to come up with ideas of how to influence the other two houses. I don't think we need to force the other two houses. I think we only need to encourage one, probably the younger one. They're hungry. They'll take anything. Would you risk something, siding with someone who may have power, or will you take a small step up from somebody who already has it? Mm. If we give them what, if we give them a little bit of status, or find a way to give them a little bit more status, a little more prestige, under current leadership, they'll have no reason to side the way they are now. Thus, it'll also show the house in just decline. They can be threatened. They can be pushed because unfortunately you can only lose so much and everybody has a price of how much they're willing to lose. So we can show them how much they have to lose. They still have something. By taking the actions they are, they have so much more to lose. They have so much further to fall. One we can do with well, city niceties. will fall if if city is not unified. Yeah. Also, if you mentioned more prestige. Like, how are we supposed to do that? Glorious and I'm going to look right over at Matthias. Everyone loves fancy titles. And you're just going to give them to them? In exchange for, hey, don't side with this other house. No, we, we don't want it to look like we're saying do it not to. Say, hey, look, under the current regime, look what you can benefit from. Now you they lose they nothing. and they, So are, the, the question is, do you want to sacrifice to win or do you just want to win with no loss? If we can give them a win and no loss, then that is the best outcome for them. They don't care how they're getting prestige, power, what else. They just want it. So if you give them an avenue with very few impediments, nobody's going to argue with that. And with Matthias's inroads, maybe there's something that we can leverage there. I mean, I have a feeling they would know exactly what you were doing. And it Do would they not care? be as one, two, three, you get to be a lord. Mm. Yes, this is a new house, but they are still already powerful, and they're powerful when they're allied with someone else that is equal in power. You have to offer them something that is going to be more than that, tenfold. Give them, in, give them command of army. Gal is right here. You need to up the offer that... Uh 
the majority senator has given them. Which, and I'm motioning towards Matthias, we have an inroad with very powerful people and families. Have I met the uh, the leaders of these houses and the sun? Okay. <clears throat> um, of the Tirthani, you will have seen Vildine Tirthani at a party, almost always accompanied by his manservant Hanfros, um, an old, wizened, yet extremely wealthy and powerful man, and wants everyone to know it. Um, amongst the, uh, the Minthors, Trevalis Minthor actually doesn't do the social thing very much. Uh, he is single-mindedly fixated on his fire business, which is why his house has risen so rapidly. Um, that single-mindedness. <laughs> um, in any, uh, any other place, he'd be a merchant prince, but he managed to get land in Tyr, so that makes him a noble. His son, Verassi, however, you've met. Do you remember the noble whose guards pushed Constantine into the fruits land in Shadow oh, Square? Oh, yes. Yeah. That's I had a feeling that was going to come back up. Okay. So. We're going to kill him. You could almost certainly arrange a, a meeting with either of these two with your uh, with your reputation amongst the nobles. This is the kind of place that it pays off. And so have I met him that. since that, that event? Maybe at a party. He'll have been drunk and you'll have struggled to even get two words in edgeways with him. They probably wouldn't have recognized us then. Recognized me. Not at all, no. I think we were not important enough for him to recognize us. Yeah, I was going to say, he, he would not recognize us even if we all stood in front of him. We were, were, were shit. So then, just to lay your options very clearly on the table that you've, um, that you've, been, that you've got for yourselves here, uh, arrange a visit with, it'll probably be uh, Verassi of Menthor, uh, arrange a meeting with uh, Senator Vildine Tirothani, um, the question of how to deal with Turax's actual investigation itself. Because no matter what you do to his supporters, that question's out there now. Right? So he, they ha he has, Tithian has to be seen to be doing an investigation. You've got to find, figure out some way to deal with that. Uh, let's, let's have a look at what... The and, sorry, yeah, sorry. and individually, sorry, um, Tin and Bengal Bengal, you've been both asked by respective contacts to keep your eyes out for things. Um, milk blooded cabbage people in one case and uh, angry gladiators in the other got it and i'm not supposed to kill them although i was a bit unsure <laughs> on the mixed instructions i was getting yeah <laughs> we'll see it'll be a case of we'll see yeah so what's it gonna be guys I, out of character yeah i'm thinking that the young idiot who obviously stands to inherit his father's business could be convinced if his father suddenly passes away which would probably then, in the long run collapse his house because it seems to me like Minthor is a but proposing that to his son depending <laughs> on how close he is to his father is another well, issue before you poison his dad <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't say I was going to poison <laughs> anyone <laughs> before we poison people. I wouldn't just go and poison someone. Um, That's kind of what you do, though, isn't it? The, see, the Tyr uh, was it Tyrion? What's the old, the old guard? Yeah. Now, the old guard. The I can. Ma what's their status here now? I mean, obviously they're nobles, but obviously I know that in. In obviously uh, uh, monarchy days and stuff like that, all these fancy titles, n lords love fancy titles, like even if it's the hand of the king or. Uh, so they mean things in as, and you'll see on the roll twenty by the way. There, there's a little picture of Vildin Tirthani, um, the entrance to their house, and you can just see the end of the lizard, which is his house's holy, um, holy sin, his house's um, heraldic standard. Okay. Uh, okay, so what's his status? Is very high. Um, they are. They claim to be the oldest of all the of all the noble families, and they just have a, an overwhelming amount of tradition and status that accrues to that. Are they if the you, house that, that claim that to be there before Kalak uh, was? Uh, here? Yeah, Tirthani, the Thanes of Tyr. Yes. Yeah. So, 
how is nobility in Star Wars? I take it it's just by taking power. I mean, what about arranging a wedding between houses? Those things happen, yes. Like to bring them back into oh fray Are to we take... going to be wedding planners? I I'm just thinking like, you know, we're trying to persuade them in a way to come over to the to not to the dark side to the good side and uh you know maybe suggesting that like the king himself is he married or he is not he's not <laughs> how old is he a tithian he's in his early 40s so maybe arranging a marriage between tithian and 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 the yeah, of mentor yeah uh for, <laughs> for the old guard would would that would be a, a big big thing that i reckon that would solve that issue and i think if the big one goes does, over I, re I reckon the little one might naturally just go over anyway does <clears throat> master Tithani have a daughter of of wedding age he has no offspring he's the last one oh oh, oh let's kill this plan. fool he's done game over <laughs> How about House uh, Minthor? Uh, yes, House Minthor has has, uh, has two kids. Varati has a sister, Verana. And is um, she of wedding age? Uh, she's twelve. Oh, perfect. So is, say, is, that a, is, that, is that a yes? I don't really want to. Yeah, I, I, uh, really... I want to ask if that's okay, but I don't want it to be okay. It is on not. Afas, no. It probably okay. would. The not question be that we in the, in, in the cities? No, that's not okay that. Okay with making a child bride? No. Uh, is 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 dwarf yes tin no <laughs> i would think um, that's worse <laughs> i actually was going for that i wanted to see if anybody would pick up on it and like it was great just watching your faces oh <laughs> now actually reverse it um now nah, yeah i don't want to make child brides there's either one so so that's that out so of that's, door, then. That... Who, who are their main competitors <sighs> Um, the Chirthani have no competitors, because there's nothing to compete for. Uh, I suppose, as far as the Minthros go, probably the Freydlav family. So they're also going to carry on their name when he dies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, the Freydlav family are also, um, f busy up-and-coming fire merchants. Uh, you might, you might find that the, uh, the, as, as, uh, as Hana suggested, that the Tirthani and the Minthors have something in mind as well. Uh, bargaining positions that which you can either get them to deviate from or pander to. Uh, they won't have come to Turax with uh, um, a blank check. Yeah, so finding out what that would be. Exactly. So how do we find out what that is? Well, as I oh. said, for you to arrange a meeting with them is uh, it's, it's a phone call. That's all it takes. I'll pull out my Nokia. We have phone. All right. <laughs> this, this is a thing now. <laughs> Keanu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they haven't got the like, the newer models, but you know, haven't got iPads and stuff like that. But they Aww. have a Nokia. Yeah. All right. Know. So you're going to send word out that you'd like uh, you would appreciate meetings with both Minthor and uh, Tirthani family. Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Well, who, who do you want to see first? Who do you guys reckon? Maybe I reckon the old boy first. The younger one would be more willing to come to the yeah. table first. I reckon the old boy first, because if we find out what the old boy wants first... Wait, wait, wait. Uh, you, and I then we said that the old boy has no offspring. He's got no, yeah, that's anything. what I mean. So what does he want? He obviously wants his name. I reckon he yeah, wants he his needs name his Lenny, he, needs, he needs his house to continue. <clears> so yeah. yeah, that's actually... I reckon speaking to the, them first, because they're the, if they're the oldest and... the like, then, then sorting something out with them, and then going to the younger ones and say, "Look, you know, these guys are on board with us. We want you, you might on board." Also, be prepared to expect them that they are very unhappy with the fact that the slaves have been abolished. Yeah, that might be a role as well. So be prepared that you're going to get that uh, in in the conversation. And, the Tirthani for us, is that right? Also, they I, know that's who we I think. involve. I, 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 they don't know that I was involved. No, I Me was. too. If anything, I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I was at the game. They don't know that we were involved. Kill. We were in the we were in the stands on a level where no. So I know not. Go. So me and Matthias should be pretty fine. Yeah. 
I think I... that um, Bengal and Tik Tik will like sit up, sit the meeting out because. So why, don't, why don't you deal with Agreed. the gladiator thing? Agreed. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I think um, what I'm gonna do I suppose while um, uh, Matthias is doing all of this, um, Bengal is going to be you know just sort of walking around here, um, stopping here yep. and there. He knows like a lot of gladiators hang out and just, you know, keeping an eye on things. That's what he's doing with his day. Okay, good. Right. Um, so, which... Tick Tick will join her. Join him. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay, nice. Fine. Um, we'll, uh, we'll address that right away, right, don't we? So, um, Matthias, um, you go off to make preparations. <laughs> The word out that you want meetings, then just as a, oh, have coffee with me here. We'll um, we'll talk about it over dessert there, spending the afternoon setting up the meetings. Um, Bengal, Bengal, and Tik Tik. Meanwhile, you begin a little bit of a a tour from here to there around in tier, trying to find uh, see where any of these distinct gladiators can be found. And actually, it's not too hard on Shadow Square itself at the Red Kank. Um, there's about a dozen. You recognize uh, Candler and Tukandrel against whom you fought in the, uh, in the arena. Um, there's Wenzer, uh, half of Eramas. Wenzer, you may or may not remember him. He had big mane of uh, dark black curls and was knocking around in the slave pits. But at any rate, he's uh, got a jug of brawy in one hand and is holding forth, declaiming with the other. We should be out there. We should be out there now, hunting Hermano's forces down across the dunes. He gestures toward the Golden City. We wait here for the senators to make their minds up about how many of them are going to send some of their troops and how many aren't. One gladiator is worth a hundred nobles, mercenary troops. And there's a... Ray! He sees the pair of you strolling into the square. Oh, look, these two will understand. Hey, Tick Tick. Bagal, Bagal, come on over. Let me buy you a drink. I was in the slave pens with these two. Yeah. We were in the pens together. Solid, the pair of you. Solid. He seems hey. perhaps a little drunk, but um, just, just yeah. Bad. <laughs> so, you guys are allowed to buy you a drink? What do you do? Sure. I, need, I want one with a straw. <laughs> straw for this one. So, oh, just... <laughs> so you've got a, a coconut with a straw kind of coming out of it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, because of my mandibles, they get in the way. <laughs> they do, don't they? So, um, Wenzel gets you drinks, kind of makes a big song and dance about you uh, being his old buddies from the slave pens. And you were there on the Grand Malay. Although uh, I couldn't find because I had a training injury. Um, <laughs> Quite right. So look, you know Rikas, right? Wenza says. Uh, there's a sure. great fucking picture of Wenza, by the way. Um, let me show you. <laughs> Here he is. Whoa. Is he standing like that? Because that's a really, really sexy pose. Yeah, he's standing like this. <laughs> he spends most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Flank. Yeah. Look, you know Rikas, right? <laughs> Why's he got donuts like, as on, armor? Like, on a, to talk to, right? Uh, yeah. So you can talk sense into him, right? Am I right? He turns to the other group of gladiators around him. Can I do an observation check to see what the general mood is of the people in the room? Like, do they seem to be agreeing with him, yes. or do they, or is there like, is there like one person who's like, oh god? <laughs> you know? No, he's he, he's very much preaching to his crowd. He's gotten his buddies together. They come down to the Red Kank um, to get properly tanked up and rant about uh, how Rikus is being a coward, how the army should already be in the field. Gladiators, we don't need to wait for the others. We are the crop of Tyr. There's a whole big kind of strain of that going through the group. Right. 
So you can have a word with him, right, Wenz says. What no. sort of sense do you want me to talk him into, really? That we should be out there, now, right now. And what you do. Look, hmm? what, what, you... what is going to be added to our army? Uh, uh, a couple of dozen <laughs> farmer boys with there. pikes? You listen to me. Do you know what is out there right now? It is an enemy that we can't even see. And it is an enemy that no matter how many fucking gladiators we have in this city, a dead gladiator is no gladiator at all. If we die out there in the first wave, then we cannot protect this city. And there'll be another sorcerer king, and you guys will have to go back to killing each other. There won't be more, any more drinking. There won't be any more fun or song. You'll all be dead. You're just afraid. No. Afraid? No fear. You think I fear? I stand up really tall and go up to him. I don't know what you think. Oh, hey! He shoves you in the chest. Back off there, cricket boy. Not so close. I don't budge. Okay. <laughs> you drunk. You drunk. Just a minute, please. Roll initiative. Oh. No, I'm just waiting for my electronic dice. There we go. It's uh, four. Okay. So, yeah. Um, seeing that you don't budge, Wenza puts down the, uh, the tank of Roy, spreads his legs, I said, move! And he shoves again. But it's like pushing a concrete wall. Tick Tick does not move. Weigh 500 pounds. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Look, bug. You need... I'm not listening to you. He, he, points, his, he points his finger directly at you, Bengal Bengal. You... Are a coward, and you. He turns to face Tick Tick. Are you going to move, or am I going to make you? At this point, on the porch of uh, the Red Cank, the surrounding gladiators all get up, back away, and you can see them pushing furniture against the walls. They kind of hang back. We're going to have to convince this guy physically. Um. What do you do? I look. I look at Bing. I look at Bengal. Just bite him once. Yeah, he's a big oh, bug. Five hundred pounds. Are you gonna move? <laughs> I'm not asking you again, bug. You see me moving. <laughs> He eyes you closely. He starts to... His wings come up a little bit. Like that, is it, he says. And then drops onto one hand and does a sweep spin, hoping to take all of your legs out from underneath you in one rapid move. Okay, I was anticipating a natural twin. Oh, come yeah. on. Uh, yes. First roll of the day. Outstanding. Um, it knocks you sprawling. You go skidding backwards, limbs scrabbling to pull yourself erect. Um, he rushes forward. Bagal, Bagal, if you want to do something, do it. Otherwise, there is going to be an initiative roll. I'm going to jump on him and with my you know, my unarmed and just like try and get my little grabby hands around his throat. Okay. Okay, to do what? To hold him in place? Um, to choke him out? What? Him, not not choke him out, but like, you know, sort of cut it off enough so that he stops sort of being a nuisance. So do both of those hit? Okay. Um his 
his his CMB is 24, so one of those hits. Um, and you yeah, leap off the table and wrap your hand around his throat and start leaning back on it. Uh, initially, at least, Wenza doesn't appear to notice. Um, if you guys want to pursue this, I want an, an, I want initiative rolls for both of you. All right. Um, what initiative do I roll? <laughs> if it's well, it depends on what you do. Well, you, unarmed, but I'm not really unarmed. So how does that work? <laughs> Just choose whatever it is for CMB. Oh. I presume that's what you're doing, right? Yeah, I want to do you're kind gonna, of you're right. attacks, but my, I have claws, yeah. so like, what, what? It's like Edward Scissorhands trying to then, punch then, someone, you know? It's like <laughs> you just use CMB for that okay. if it's on arm combat. Bagam Bagam and eight. There where I is? See. Where do I find that? Oh, there. And from you, a ten. Okay, yes. of course. Okay, um, Wenzer changes the entire tone of the conversation as having uh, floored you, he strides forward and whips out, well, you can see them there, these two enhanced punching daggers, oh, straddles your is. chest. <laughs> uh, hope you remember me by this. And chunk, chunk, punches him straight down towards your chitin. Just a couple of little holes to help you breathe in the future. Oh man, this guy's so uh, good. <laughs> you briefly hear Neva's voice. Don't kill them all. <laughs> okay, take your armor class twenty-three. He needs elevens or higher to hit you. A uh, fifteen and a nine. So one of them cracks the kite in. Doesn't pierce all the way through, but you do take twelve damage from it. Is he using Gal weapons? Gal. Oh yeah, he's oh, wow. using weapons. Oh. He's pulled his little um, garden, gardening sticks. Yeah, whatever those okay. things are. It's just his little gardening stick that just poked me for 12 damage. The singing sticks are coming out then, big boy. Gardeners are serious, apparently. <laughs> His armor class is 22. Ooh, 30. Okay, so one hit. 21. I'm literally holding my Kraken dice for no apparent reason. So <laughs> I need the save <laughs> you dice. Any Need to roll. Yeah, only one hit there. That's right. Oh, that's a shame. Okay, nine damage. Okay, still rolling on my screen. Nine damage. Nice. So that is a uh, a solid crunching blow across the side of his head. I presume you're kind of still hanging on to him and like whack with the uh, with the singing stick. Okay, and uh, tick tick. You spend, uh, you either spend your action, your round getting to your feet, or you uh, or you do something else from the ground. Um, from the ground. Uh, well, I mean, can I do a CMB attack at him from the ground, like a, a sweep on him? At minus four, yes. Okay. At, yeah, at minus four, because he proned you. So that makes him with have a CMB of twenty-eight. And if I spend the round getting up, so can I move? CMB roll? No, that's your. You spend around getting up. There's no move at all. Okay. Um, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm, in my case, I'm going to get up. Okay, so no, you no good pull on the yourself ground. to your feet, spring it out from uh, underneath uh, underneath Wenza, and uh, let's have another initiative roll, please, guys. Wenza rolls pretty badly. I got a six. Nine. Nine. Nine or six. Alright, Bengal Bengal. Oh yeah, right, I'm going back at him with uh, the singing sticks. I'm going to jump off his back now and focus on maybe trying to incapacitate him. Yep. So that's one hit. Again. Shit. Cool. And 11 damage. But this is for non-lethal now, right? Trying to incapacitate him. Yeah. Well, just sort of yeah. like knock his legs off. I don't really mind if I do any damage to him, so I suppose it is kind of not non-lethal. So, 
So it's, a, it's, it's, actually, it's actually a knockdown attempt. Yeah. You're actually trying to knock him to the floor, is that right? Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. fine. No. Um, so you, that 27 is enough. To, that 27 okay. is enough to do so. Um, you, the uh, singing stick swipes in, hits him just at the right point by his knee. His leg goes down from underneath him, and his tic tic rises over him. Uh, Wenzer is now lying at your feet, tic tic. Okay. What are you doing? I'm going to uh, pounce on him. Um. And I'm going to... His armor uh, class is down to 18 now. Okay, I'm going to attack him until uh, he uh, stops moving. Um, but it's going to be non-lethal if I can. Okay. Yes, of course you can. Okay. So, but it's claw attacks and bite attacks. So if I can paralyze him on the first hit with the bite, great. Hit the, so bite, the bite see, see, see how that goes. 24? Armor class 18, he is on the ground. Okay. Hits 24, okay, and here's his saving throw. Oh, so that's a pass. I guess he'll need some, some more convincing then. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five claw attacks, all non lethal. Oh. Okay, so th three hits. Three, three hits. Jeez. And the bite damage. Oh, and damage, of course. Yeah, just yeah, and I need to do. Guy. I need to do uh, bite, bite damage. damage as well. Yeah. So that's uh... okay. Sixteen and eighteen. Thirty-four. Wow. And I'm just going to, if I can, just use the the, the my momentum and my my size to just. Pin down all of his limbs. Just hold him. Okay. All right. Um, flat on the ground with a crean holding him in place. I'll, I'll let a little, bit, little bit of the of the venom from my from my mouth dribble on him. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Enough. Enough. Did you let him up? You hit me with that again, I'll cut your head off. Are we clear? I, I understand. I understand. You really think we're cowards now? I guess I'm sorry, I did. I didn't mean that. He pulls himself to his feet. Head bowed. You realize that all of his gladiators are looking at you. Me? The two of you. Oh, okay. There's a weird moment of expectation. We will fight. For tear. When Tyr is ready as a clutch. What he said. They look at you. Over at Wenzer, leaning, slumped, battered and bleeding against the porch of the Red Kank. From amongst their group, Kanla steps forward. She was Lisanne's friend. We're sorry. You're right. You've shown more than once than you know what you're doing. If Bengal and Bengal tick tick, if they if they say that that we take the slow approach, then we take the slow approach. I'm with them. Behind a Takandron nods, clapping his long elven hands together. I uh, pat Bengal Bengal on his shoulder. Thanks, man. So, I think uh, the tradition is, Wenza says, that the winner buys the loser a drink. I uh, wander no. over to the bar and I put, a, a, I pull up the bag of coins on my, on my bandolier and I pull out 
right. 20 ceramics. That should do them. Okay. Another more heartfelt cheer goes up from the gladiators now. Uh, you've well and truly won them over, both with uh, well, the strength of combat and uh, the promise of free booze. This is the only <laughs> Always way works. <laughs> and this is the way to a person's heart, honestly. I don't know how much 20 ceramics will buy, but <laughs> a lot. It'll buy, round, it'll buy a round of drinks, yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, I'll get the next round, don't worry. Matthias, uh, Constantin, and Chirodius together then go to pay a visit to uh, the Tirthani. Now we'll just change the picture away from uh, Wenzel's monstrous glutes. And his donut armor. His do donuts. They are donut armor. It's They're true. donuts. I'm hungry mm -hmm. now, is the problem. We'll never unsee that. Two donuts, and I'm still hungry. <laughs> Oh, there's a picture of this. This is like it's planned. I, could be, I spent the last 10 minutes drawing that. I'm quite insulted. <laughs> yeah, Jade, you can be the redhead. Awesome. <laughs> After making you wait on the outskirts of his villa, and then in an internal waiting room, and then in an adjoining waiting room, Senator Vildin Tirathani finally uh, comes to see you. It's clear he's just come fresh from a bath. And his manservant, Hanfros, stands behind him. Vildin stares at you. Afternoon. So, good afternoon. You requested a meeting with me. We did, sir, yes. Obviously, uh, I have invited you to many parties, but I know you, you've probably been busy. I came to that one we had last month. I've had plenty since then. It was it was nice having you. The one with the one with the Nibbanese snake charmer. You remember? My description of my great grandfather's military actions at the Battle of Kajori Pass was the center of the evening. I'm taking I completely and utterly remember that. You have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um What sir? Obviously, you know, I don't want to be seen as the upstart people here, but we're obviously trying to put Tear in the right place for the future. And it's important to us for such a, a house as yours to be obviously at the foundation of this yes yes that's quite true quite true um what can we do to help bring this house back into power well obviously it's still powerful but you, you know what i mean obviously the past i know what you mean you're hearing about the troops aren't you the troops you know everything we're trying yeah, to unite so here I understood there was a little bit of a to-do in the uh, Senate building this morning. Sorry, Council Hall. He wasn't there, was he? No, he wasn't. Him and no. Minther were absent. Yes. It was a shame not to have you there. Um, I cannot just... put my name, let alone my face, to an undertaking when I want... It seems to me to be one that's so... But it's so shallow. Defending Tyr has got to be of the utmost importance, though, have is it not? Tyr needs you. <sighs> what will one noble family's troops more or less make a difference in the larger run? Tithian is just using this to put a squeeze on every family, to weaken them at home while he prosecutes some imaginary war against, I understand it, an invisible army. Come, come. S say this army does turn up on our do doorstep. Say it does. It makes more sense that they do than they don't, you realize, right? With Kala gone, of course, Amana will come for the iron of this city. Of this city. You know this to be true. Let's say I do agree, and I, I give you my best men. 
what will be protecting them? Hmm? What the city's be? going the city's going to equip them with pitchforks and whatnot? Here's 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 uh, here's my proposition. You give me enough steel to make ten swords for my men. Done. I would say. Done. He seems a little startled. But then no more of this business with um what's what's the house again? The Miorti Lord. A Turax. Yes. A prune. That has to stop. What's going on there as well? Bring me the steel, to... and I'm sure we can come to a mutual arrangement. You get the steel, and there's no more discussion afterwards. It's a lot of steel. This sounds fair to me. I have another question for you as well. Uh, more one out of respect. What happens to this mighty house once you pass, my lord? Do you not have any heirs? I have no children. I have none. Everyone knows this. I, I know. Which is, as I said, your name here is history. It's part of the foundation. How do we ensure that continues? For if the doesn't, the Tirthani die with me. Hanfrost drops the plate uh, that he's holding. His glasses shatter across the floor. I'm sorry. Stupid fool! Pick that and clean that mess up this moment! Don't you, don't you see how I have guests? Idiot boy. Hanfrost yeah. scurries off and comes back a few moments later and starts mopping up the mess and cleaning up the shards. And Sorry, I did not mean to cause offence. I just was just concerned. This is a, a historic house. And may you live a long, long life. I can do without your patronizing. We know what you're here for. You've had, I've got you, given you a deal. I Go away. I'm not patronizing you. I am deeply concerned. But thank you yes. for seeing us. Well, that's hardly appropriate way to speak to a senator. <clears throat> I expect to see you back shortly with steel. Thank you. Yes, go on. Get a move on. Goodbye. 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 Okay. I walk out to the girl. I am. What's going to happen with his name? This house? I assume we're outside right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll beside it just to throw um, this. It disappears. But this is... No one will care. It'll drift away. There's a reason it's in decline. People will remember the name, but not much else after long enough. A new house will rise to take its place, or fall to take its place in its current position. You can't save somebody that doesn't want saving. <clears throat> Focus on those that want your help. There's more than enough of them in the city. Or okay. if it pleases you, pick the next successor of that house. It's Start building them to, up. It's not for me to decide. But how are we going to get You're ten swords, Corodius? Hmm? He didn't say ten swords. He said the steel for ten swords. Oh, the steel for ten metal swords. And where do we get that from? You keep agreeing these trades. Look, King Thithian said, do what must be done and promise them what they want true so that's exactly oh. where we're going to get it we have a royal decree and that should get us the steel we need matthias didn't you just save the house that could produce such a thing the other day well i didn't completely did we vorden yeah they sell it yeah vorden sells it let's go see you vorden, saved then. them from being overrun by that mob they, i'm they sure that you could parlay that into their, their, their warehouse on, on iron square was yes You've saved plenty of their stock. Pretty sure they're going to be more amenable to helping you. Well, let's go see them then, shall we? 
Okay, so um, just to just to recap, uh, Tick Tick and Bagal Bagal, um, you head back to uh, to presumably to Matthias's villa to yeah. find um, these three discussing the matter there, having come from their meeting with uh, with Chirthani. Yeah, fair enough. You look. You look like you've been in a fight. What's going on? Oh yeah, we had a uh, bit of a mess up with uh, some gladiators, but uh, it's all right. Well, one of your servants appears. Um, my lord Matthias, we have just received a message from Verassi of Menthor. He is willing to meet with you at the Kallax Demise Tavern. Is that a new tavern? It, well, it used to be called the Wyvern. And there, lots of people still call it the Wyvern, but since Kalak died, it's been renamed Kalak's Demise. It is one of the worst shitholes in Tyr. Why would they want us to meet there? Maybe they're picking a place they feel is worthy of our station. Very well. Should I? I mean, do I know anything about this place? Should Should I be worried? Yeah. Don't go there. You'll get you'll get knifed. Huh. <laughs> but that's where he says he's going to be. Is there any healing? So, um, just to quickly clarify, uh, you uh, the the party has six healing potion fruits to share out between you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wait. Had, no. Had, wait. Uh, seven. One. Yeah, you've yes. got the one that was given you last week. Yeah. By one of our I'm kind viewers. One. Yes. And there are six, six others and two un unidentified fruit. So, and nobody here can actually do any kind of healing magic on their own, right? I can do medicine. I can do. I can do very little. I think it's like what is it? One d four. D four. Yeah, you can do a small amount. That and requires I would say proper, constant, proper I rest. will. I will say upon seeing Tick Tick um, and his injuries, I would use that skill um, right now on him. <laughs> How much is it to hire to have like an in-house cleric? And has cleric that you won't be able to buy a cleric. Um, okay. They they are interested in matters of faith, but you could uh, certainly oh you certainly four. hire. You want a four, what four damage? No 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 no! I'm healing him. <laughs> yeah, you healed him for four. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna do you I'm, some I'm, damage. Uh, I'm going to heal you. <laughs> <laughs> do you feel better? <laughs> that puts you up to forty-seven. Tick tick. All right. Okay, so you also mentioned something about um, uh, doing something to acquire the Tirithani steel. Are you going to take that to Tithian or to to I, or... I want to speak to the uh, the the warehouse, the people obviously in the warehouse that we we helped say, like obviously I helped say Vorden, House of Vorden. Vorden. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, the Vorden is uh, is not uh, the city. Yeah? They're an independent uh, trading yeah. house. Yeah. But I'm trying to think so if, if, if if you want to, them to actually hand over that kind of amount of steel, you will have to come with a royal warrant because otherwise they will never part with that kind of. No, amount. I was more on the suggestion of the king will pay for the steel because okay. it, it just. I mean, obviously, it's good to to be able to give jobs to. I'm trying to build relations with these people. So the fact that the, the king will be paying for this regardless, if I can build a station with Vorden or any other one, that, that anyone else that makes steel here, is there anyone else that we know of? Is there a few? Vorden don't make steel. The government <clears throat> makes the steel. Yeah. Oh, Vorden okay. is one of, the, one of the families that sell it. So where's the government's steel coming from? From the mines. Which are now closed, correct? They're, they're just in the process of reopening them. Right. But is there any kind of sur like leftover surplus from, from before no. the mine was closed? No. Was but you you could you could I mean Corodius can certainly get you a meeting with uh, with someone in the Bureau of Trade. You could probably get a meeting with Tithian over this if you wanted to, exactly. off the back of your royal commission. Yeah. And uh, there's also the fact that there is no necessarily no spare iron out there, but there are spare weapons which are iron too. They're steel too. So if you get the weight in steel in weapons. Uh, and there is, a, at the moment, um, um, Karodias happens to know that, there's a, um, a mort mortuary on, uh, uh, on uh, the selling of weapons. Um, um, you mean a moratorium? Moratorium, yeah. sorry, yeah. Um, um, put down by the city because they, want, they expect uh, to be fighting. 
And this is exactly what this uh, is for then. So that uh, gives them the steel already that they need. Just the question is that we need uh, Tithian's uh, uh, stamp of approval that we actually get the money to order the, the, the approval to get to those weapons and deliver it. He's given us a royal decree to do something, so there you go, Tithian. Deal yeah. with it. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so we that's get, that we, 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 we got two things at once eh, with this deal. He gets the steel, but we get the army and we get him to stop to support. Uh, so it was yeah. a good deal. Uh, Mark, Tick Tick is going to eat his potion fruit. One of healing, okay, cool. Yeah, the one that I got from uh, yep, and hit, so hit me with viewer the, last week. Hit me with a D8, please. Uh, okay. While we're doing that, everyone in chat, we're sponsored by Crack and Dice. If you would like to win some of your own awesome, incredible dice, these are not on the shelves yet. Exclamation mark giveaway, and you can enter. 49 so. hit points. Seriously. <laughs> Better than nothing. Yeah, <laughs> All right, so I, I, I'm, I'm a bit confused. Are you going to talk to Tithian about this steel or not? Are you going to talk to the Tithian about the steel of the, and of also the mines? And yeah. uh, when are you going to go see Barassi? Uh, we're probably Barassi now, then I would have guessed. Okay, all right. Are you, are you guys going to see him as a group? Or, or, yes. or just one or, one of your two, one or two of you going to the Galaxy no, I think we go Sorry, as a full group. I can't group. say that with a straight face. <laughs> a full no, no, group, no, fully armed. A, fully armed, full group, yes. Nice. Yeah, okay, absolutely. All right. Let's be right with you. Although I might leave most of my coin at home. Yes, I'm leaving That's my coin at home. That's probably pressable, yes. Yeah, any sort of... Already I done. For... I entrust yeah. you. I agree. Also, Mark, uh, Tin is wearing his um, urban wear. Gotcha. Okay. Um, to the rest of you, by the way, uh, before you head out, Tin changes his apparel into a interesting mix of dusty, sandy browns and the occasional splash of muted white. Um, Matthias, you recognize it as uh, the Athasian version of urban camouflage. Okay. But it's... Um, it's, it's done so well as just to appear as normal clothing. Kallax Demise is as awful as I described. Uh, it is in a side alley off Shadow Square, um, uh, an alley, I should say, that is filled with trash and refuse, and you can see shapes shuffling around inside it, almost certainly rubbish slugs, which are these giant caterpillar things that live inside rubbish and will, um, will eat you if they can. Uh, there's, you can't tell if they're drunk or dead. There's a body sprawled halfway down the steps on the way out. And as you emerge in, a thick, smoky atmosphere clogs nostril and vision alike. At a booth in the back with a handful of scantily clad young women on either hand uh, and four of his bodyguards standing by the booth is, um, is young Mr. Barassi. Uh, Mark, as we enter, uh, Tim's going to kind of peel off to the side. Like he's going to move away from the group, working his way around yep. the side. Okay, cool. This is the the young man in the in, in the market when Nissa died. Yes, okay. you recognize him, uh, Constantine. Just for a moment, you, you you're back there. His guard shoving you, him uh, failing completely to uh, to make anything of the uh, the situation. In fact. Very much making it worse. All right, and Mark, I would remind you that um, Tin's um, enemy is human, um, as we agreed nice. on last week. <laughs> yep. Okay. <clears throat> I walk up to the booth. Yes. Hello. Are you trying to have me assassinated here? I smile. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. I am. Um... Uh, I have to say, I, I just like the rougher establishments. They have a certain authenticity, um, a, 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 well, I don't really know what it is. There's a certain rough and tumble romance, um, which I, I just find um, quite appealing. Um, sit yourselves down. Um, and thank you for agreeing to meet me here in my favorite drinking establishment. Um, Tick Tick is going to stay by the bar. He's not even going to walk over to the booth. He's pretending like he doesn't belong with them. Okay, cool. He's just standing so, in a statue. Yeah. I buy a drink. <laughs> so, what are we here to discuss then? All this cloak and dagger. 
The most exciting. I didn't make it cloak and dagger. Um, this is just where I like to drink. What can I say? I'm a, I'm a man of the people. Well, obviously we're here to discuss Tyr. The beautiful city that is Tyr. And its future. Really? Troops. Obviously supporting the king if we can. Just ways to move forward. For the benefit of the city. I see. How about you? This is about that Turax matter, isn't it? Um, was he there? He wasn't there either, was he? He wasn't there, no. Well, well, I suppose it could be about that as well, of course. I mean, obviously it's not up to us who you support, but in what matters. The it's main thing is, is to troops. We need the troops. The city is going to come under attack. Yes, I'm sure it will. I was thinking it would be a good time to um, to go to our winter home until everything sort of died down a little bit. It's near the Forest Ridge, he says, looking down toward you, Bengal, Bengal. Lovely. Oh, yes. Um, up in the, the Padrisi Valley, it's beautiful at this time of year. Um, sometimes we even see some of your people wandering around in the trees at night, you know. Quite exciting. I'm sure it is. So, business, as I say. The matter for us is letting our men march off to war depletes what we have at home and um, allows our uh, rivals to squeeze themselves into the market where uh, or we'd really rather they wouldn't be. So what if there's no tear to come home to? Oh, there'll always be a tear to come home to. Honestly. No, we must we must use situations like this for our advantage. You understand me? I've been to your parties, Matthias. <sighs> yes. We're the same sort of people. We understand how this goes for us. We all weather the storm, as we always do. I've been in many storms, like Elven Market storms, you know, those Elven sort of market. things. Yeah. We met once there, I don't know if you remember. In the Elven Market? What on earth would I be doing down in the Elven Market? I have no idea. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm missing something. I'm, uh, this was am him, I wasn't it? To, Yes, absolutely. Am yeah. I supposed to remember this meeting? No, it wasn't exactly a meeting. We just met, you know, fruit everywhere, that sort of thing. Um, fruit everywhere? Yeah. Guards come in, Templars. A big fight happened. Oh, my goodness. Oh, Glad my goodness. You, you got out alive. I remember now. Um, yes. One of my men shoved some lout who was loitering in the in our way into a cabbage stall. That was him, yes. What the yes, fool. yes. You were there anyway, that day. Uh, I was did there. Did you yes. see what did you see what happened? Yes, uh, the, I was there. The, uh, the, the lout's bit of um uh, of elven jolly has got herself fried. Yes. And then, they ended up on the ziggurat, of course. Where were you? I, I don't, I don't, uh, you were the diet at the giant. Oh, no, we, uh, we ended up on the ziggurat, of course. You on the, no, you're, you're confused. I'm talking about these, these, these low lies I ran across in the market this one day. And you yes. said, you said you saw it happen. Yes. Hmm, well, honestly, made me, made me late for my, um, for my parlor recital. Oh, I do apologize for that. We were busy. Well, it's no. Wait, wait, did, wait, did you know these people? Yes. The elf that got fried was one of my close friends, actually. Caused by the death of. Which guard was it? Mandax. 
Mandax. Oh, sorry. Are you asking him which which of his guards? Yeah, I was, was asking was, him. Oh, okay, right. You know, I actually don't remember. If you hadn't mentioned the fight, I would have forgotten all about it. Yeah, if, I haven't forgotten. I, if I had to tell you how many people my guard shove out of the way on a given day, it's... So what True. were they to you? They were your slaves or something? No. Actually, Nissa was one of my closest friends. What were you doing associating with that sort of person? You know, I don't remember seeing you there. I would have, I would have recognised your outfit, if nothing else. Well, obviously, you wouldn't have. Uh, we were just minding our own business, and then, you know, some lout shoved one of our friends into a store and caused a, a kerfuffle. And then next minute, no Templars were there trying to kill people. Hmm. I see, right. Well, this has all become somewhat, somewhat a little bit awkward. Yes, well, let's not make that awkward. Anyway, the future... Is Tear in your future? Because it's very much yes, in mine. Yes, it is. And if my friends have helped build that ziggurat with their blood and bones, if you're not going to be part of that friendship for Tear, that un unity of Tear, then I need to know. No, Matthias. Our future lies in Tyr. We'll give you the troops you need if you do something for us. What is it? The Freydlav family, they have a new shipment of grain. It's in the silos on their farm right now. Destroy it. Actually, I, can I have make a counter suggestion there? Why don't we confiscate that? For the greater give it to the people. Um, yes, uh, whatever, whatever it takes. Mm, what luck. is this grain to you? Competition. Uh... Yes. We'll confiscate that grain, but it will go to good use. As you wish, but just make sure it doesn't go into the market. And Tyr has your troops, and this business with whatever his name is Turex Turex this ends oh well we have no further interest in supporting Turex but I, I, I rather think you won't be able to bury the call for the investigation that easily we don't plan to uh, bury it it's obviously got something to that's know, got to happen uh, yes we need to know whether those terrorist veiled alliance were really involved who knows I guess some way someone will find out something but my main importance is your interest in Tyr surviving and being a part of Tyr's future. If that's where your interests and alliances lay, then that's good for us. Tyr's survival. Yes, I think we understand each other, Matthias. Excellent. We will arrange for the grain uh, to be confiscated. Outstanding. And we, and we can report to uh, <clears throat> the king that you uh, will be supporting him with troops then. Once the grain is taken off the market, yes. Good. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm uh, keeping an eye out around. Obviously, I've noticed his demeanor's changed. <clears throat> Yeah, There's Mark, uh, you a message. Uh, Tim's doing the same thing. He's watching. Yes, TV. yes, I see it. Okay, good. His guards watch you as you leave, and so does more than uh, one more patron at the at the tavern. But it's fairly clear to them that your group is one that's becoming known and what you're becoming known for. And uh, nobody hampers your exit from the inn. As the uh, the day is has worn down. You head back, perhaps, to the council chambers to uh, to report on progress and um, and talk to Tithian about some steel. Yes, and and some confiscation of grain. Yeah, he's uh, in a number of meetings. You only have to wait an hour and a half before he's finally free to see you. The sun has sunk across the city by now. 
when uh, one of his personal guards ushers you into uh, into the meeting chamber that he's in. I think we can probably do without the belly dancing music, to be honest. Why is he not there belly dancing? <laughs> he ushers a, ushers a troop of belly dancers out of the room. Just as, uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, how's your day been? Productive? Productive? Well, we'll have to see uh, See what your reaction will be for what we've decided. That does not bode well. Well, it bodes well in the fact that you have all the troops from these houses, apart from the third house. What have you done? <sighs> Number one? We need to steal for ten swords. You need what? Steal for ten swords, and then you will have their army. Have you taken leave of your senses? That's 15,000 ceramic pieces. Yes. That's the price of them not cooperating. For one house? Absolutely not. Out of the question. You go back to them, and you tell them, or you sort of them a different deal. We are not paying the Teathani 15,000 ceramic pieces for a handful of their troops. Absurd. And okay. burying the investigation into them. Yes. <laughs> into the investigation. Obviously, that's bury the investigation. Situation. Have you found someone who's, you, who you can pin this on? Just okay. because just because you take the Teathani and uh, Mintho support away from Turax doesn't make his question go away. It's out there now. I've been fielding requests for this all afternoon. It has a life of its own. Kill it. As for this absurd situation with the Teothani, 15,000 ceramic pieces, unless it comes out of your pocket, is, a, is preposterous beyond words. If you made that deal with them, you're going to have to go back and take it back. And if you want to come up with another one, get onto it. And what was the other matter? The Minthors. Yes, they have some grain we need to confiscate. They have some grain you need to confiscate. Well, they don't want it on the market. So I was thinking maybe we buy it, make it, and use of it, make good use of it. Who has this grain? The Minthos? I don't understand. Who is it Competition again? has it. The and they don't want it on the market. House. Oh, the Freight Labs? Yes. Yes. And he wants you to buy their grain from them? He wants us to confiscate it. Surely something good can come of this if we use the grain to feed the people. Maybe feed the previous slaves, turn them into fighters. I don't know. Use this grain for the army. Yeah, it's the food distribution program. That's, um, that's a good move. Um, Charodius, do you have the authority to do this? Mm, I would need probably to confer with uh, the senior leaders of the Closer to your mic. Trade Bureau, but with your support, I'm sure we could swing that. Well, uh, Carl, just out of character, do you have the accuse power yet? I, I thought I did, but I'm just checking. <laughs> Give me a sec. You bring your mic closer. Uh, Mine? Yes, I do. Okay, so that's all you need. You already have authority with that. Uh, okay. Good. So what would yes. be acceptable with these Tyrians? House Tyrion, wherever it is. I don't know. Threaten them. Um, blackmail them. Uh, find something else to pay them off with. But 15,000 ceramics. Come on, man. I... I, I hesitate to remind you that you did mention whatever it takes. So this is what it took. Do you really believe that the armors that, for, that we could with that we could recruit mercenaries, five times as many mercenaries as the Teathani would be able to produce? Well, so not, that the, the, of course the follow-up is of course what kind of army will he present? So we will have a negotiation with him on that. So here. It's not worth 15,000 ceramic pieces. Do we have any kind of, or a better question for you, do you have any kind of evidence that we can plant to end this investigation? Because a house in decline with only one sole heir that um, once he passes, 
you know, not even air, just a current butt on a seat. We could just stick them with the bill for this whole matter. When they decline, there goes an entire ally for your opposition, and we've dealt with two birds, one stone. Plus, Wait, since people know that the, the Tirthani were with Turax, it'll also throw incredible doubt on Turax as well if we pin the blame there. You mean frame the Tirthani for Kalak's assassination? I don't yes. like that. I like it. That is a devious suggestion indeed, Constantine. No, it's efficient. Good. Go back to them. And uh, explain to them what is uh, in front of them. Congratulations. I'm impressed. Do you know if they have anything that can pin? They're asking the question. They have to have some kind of something to throw around rather than a question. I'm sure you have more than a few advisors who have told we you don't, right now what the we don't need. Is. We don't need any evidence. We will simply say that the King's Royal Commission has investigated the matter and House Tithani has been found culpable. Why don't we say that about the other house? Minthos. Um... It's for the Minthos. Well, if Carodius is correct, she can actually confiscate the grain from them and that will put that matter to rest. I was thinking more of the prune guy. Correct. Kind of friend. Oh, it's a chess game. He'll see this if we if we get our way. It'll see that he'll see this is a move that he lost, and he'll move on to the next one. This is just one move in a long chain of political motivations and maneuvering that uh, our friend Senator Turax has indulged in throughout his long life. He'll simply shrug, accept defeat, and move on to the next challenge. Well, I believe that uh, is matter settled him. Huh? He rises, signaling the audience at an end. Thank you. And uh, you head out into the Tyrian night. Um, are we all staying at uh, Matthias's villa, by the way? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes? Corodius? Uh, am I invited? I think they did last session, actually. I believe what was said was he's allowed or she's allowed inside and that's a start. Okay. <laughs> but Matthias, are you allowing Kerodius to yes, she stay? Can stay with the dogs? Muted. Did you say something? I said she can stay with the dogs. Am I still muted? No, she's, no you're not uh, muted now. We heard that. No, will, <laughs> I'm will, joking, will, by the way. She will drop you off with your, uh, with your entourage. Said, no, he says he's joking, so... Okay. okay. She has her own place to stay if you don't. Uh, okay. You know, he invites you in. Okay. So, Corodius, Matthias invites you in. That's very gracious. Um, I suppose we uh, continue to uh, <clears throat> strategize on how to move forward. By the way, does this house have guards? And if not, uh, what are the defenses of this villa? I have guard posts and okay. stuff. I don't know. Have I got guards? Yeah, you can. You'll have a small number of guards, say half a dozen guards. Uh, and there it is. It's night time now, so. He didn't seem happy, did he, in the tavern? He didn't seem happy about what? Just about the whole deal in general. I see a backlash. He seemed happy about not having to deal with it. Kyrodius is the one that has to deal with the grain. And at some point, we need to go back and threaten the other um, with the information that we are going to say that they are collaborators. So he doesn't have to get his hands dirty I think he's happy enough I don't think he was happy with the deal about giving such a large sum but that was remedy oh not Tyrion I'm talking about the idiot in the in the, in the bar you overplayed your hand 
I don't like him. Oh, no, I wanted to put an arrow through the back of his throat. But right now, he's a necessary evil. I would rather put the blame on them than the Tyrians. Tirithani, you mean? The Tirithani. Um, look, look, honestly, whatever. he doesn't care how it's done. He does not care how it's done, who has to die, who gets to live. We just need a reason why. How are we getting uh, the Tirthani to give over anything with the such with he's we've already been told no to the deal that was brokered meaning if we go back to try to broker a new one we've already gone back on our word once so they may ask for more as a show of good faith i think i think the the best way forward is indeed to come back to them and said well we were busy busy with getting this deal arranged we actually were informed that you are at a moment under the investigation and are about to be accused for being <clears throat> Part of the part of the uh, assassination attempt at, uh, of of, of Kalak, and maybe that uh, will actually convince him then to to drop his demand for the steel and 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 give. Uh, I don't know. I would change our wording maybe a little bit. We don't want to tell him he's being investigated. We just want to let him know that the threat is out there. Um, that he could be investigated based on information that's been gathered. Um, so that way, if it, when this all plays out, if there's not an investigation, there's still the sort of a sword dangling over his head. Yeah, but we need to quite, quite make quite clear that the, the offer of steel is now off the table and with this new information. Hey, you two are the politicians. No, no, no it's fine. Uh, I'm not a politician. I think it's probably better coming from you. I have no power. You do. I'm a junior Templar. I don't have that much power. I can advise you. You are a junior Templar, and Matthias is at this point, I'm assuming, on his way to be joining one or two councils himself. You, too, do have power, and I'd like to appear to have as little as possible. Mm. I don't want to be the one accusing this man. He doesn't have much to give apart from what Louis has left. Then we need an alternative. <laughs> so, the sandstorm that has been dogging Tear for the last few days bleeds away to the sound of distantly rolling dice. And you, Carodius, I guess you head back to the villa to prepare for what's going to be a particularly tricky day. You have to seriously damage the Frey Lab family by confiscating their grain. And of course, um, you have to go and see uh, the Tirthani uh, about a somewhat delicate matter involving you're not getting 15,000 ceramic pieces and you might go to jail. <laughs> okay, which order would you like to, uh, to ruin lives in? Well, let's first confiscate some grain, shall we? Okay, so you ride out as a group to the uh, to the Freylev estate. <clears throat> Actually, um, I bring some Templars along. Are you going to use your requisition Templars ability? Oh yes. Okay, nice. Uh, and how many is that? Um, <clears throat> let me have a look. Looksy, looksy. Uh, yeah, Requisition Templars is the one I'm going to do for the first one, and Summon Templars is the one I'm going to do for the second uh, talk we have. Okay. Um, let me quickly grab the... Da -da 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 -da. Here we go. So how many come with you? Exactly. 1d4 soldiers per level. So, oh, there shit. we go. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so 5d4. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, roll. D20. Do you want me to roll it for you? Oh, yeah, if you could, yeah. Yeah, right here. Yeah. 5d4. Nice. 
13. Okay, so 13 Templar Centurions. So um, when the rest of you troop out into the uh, the cool morning street, Carodius is quite simply marching up the road with 13 Templar Centurions behind her. Yeah, and, and also 20 carriers, which I, I, I um, hire. Right, okay. You head out of the city to the Freydlav estate. It's nearby the city, not one of the older uh, older estates. Long plantations of uh, farrows, their needle-like crop, which can be turned into all sorts of grain. You can see workers tilling the fields, guards stationed around the perimeter, tall grain silos in the hazy morning air, visible as the sun just kisses the top of them coming over the top of the mountains. And uh, a couple of guards on light crodlu ride out from the main house and come to a halt in the road before your large, well-apportioned group. Uh, good morning, uh, um, Templars. We're not expecting a visit at the house. Might I ask what this is, uh, this is about? Um, we are to meet with the head of the house, Matters of State. <clears throat> Uh, yes, very well. I'll have her uh, notified. A pair of them spur their crowd loose and go running back toward the main house. By the time your group reaches the house itself, a low two-story building of heavy, dark fire wood, there is a knot of eight moderately well-armed and armoured frayed lab guards flanking a tall woman early 60s, you think, hair silvering, eyes sharp like the morning dew, Jora Freydlav. And she strides out of the house, uh, folds her arms. Good morning, uh, Lady Freydlav. Good morning. To what do I owe this pleasure? We are visiting you on behalf of the city of Tyr and uh, the king. She, her eyes quickly flick over the group. You two, you're the ones who went into the Golden Tower, aren't you? She looks at Bengal Bengal and Tick Tick. Yes, that was us. You must have seen something very special. Special is one way to describe it, I suppose. And you're attached to the Templar right now, are you? Well, attached is perhaps a strong word, but Corodius is our friend. Strong enough for you to turn up at my house before I finish my breakfast, armed with... Oh, and that's Matthias. I didn't realise we actually went. So what's this all about then? She um, looks at you, Constantine. Mm. There's no flicker of recognition there. Um, you are uh, hereby requested to uh, do your contribution for the defense of uh, Tyr and uh, asked to hand over your uh, Pharaoh food supplies. What? Yes. There, there has to be some mistake. This is our new crop. There you go. Um, we, we are to feed an army, and um, that is what it is. Who's to feed us? Our livelihood uh, depends on this. You can't just come here and take all of our grain. That's preposterous. We have to make uh, uh, we have to make ends meet uh, as a city, and uh, we all have to, uh, as we say, shed a feather. This is your feather to shed. <clears throat> but surely there's a ratio involved. We can't give you every last farrow needle. As she looks at the soldiers, uh, can you please say... Uh, um, this is monstrous! No! Our family will starve! Corodius, not all of it. Let them feed their people. Um, so, that, so that's what the gladiators are here for, eh? You're the hired muscle. If an old woman doesn't do as she's told by some Templar. 
this is Bless a little bit, this is a little bit bigger than you <laughs> in this uh, particular case um <clears throat> as for the feeding um i will take care of the feeding of your people how but you're, but you're um i have 230 uh, rice in my own warehouse 230 pounds of rice you can eat that we're to eat rice yes like some kind of peasant yes like the rest of the city this is you can take it up of the king if you uh, really want to insist on making a, a trouble out of this she looks toward her guards and then back toward the two gladiators no you've done well to bring your hired meat along with you we will defend you, sir. My, my lady, says one of the guards. They would tear you to pieces in seconds. It's a queen, and worse, a halfling. Have some sense. Well, allow me to register my official dismay at this heartless demonstration. Kerodius uh, gets out a piece of paper, and I will have to note a formal complaint. Of course you'll note a formal complaint. You're bankrupting, bankrupting my family. We're not the only fire or farmers. How much have you taken from the Minthors? Believe me, we've taken a lot from the Minthors. Wow. We'll, so we'll soon find out about that. And she turns and... As she turns away, you can see her face crumples as she can no longer master her emotions, and head bowed to hide her tears. She strides back into the house, her guards following her. Your bearers, I presume, begin to, uh, to take her family's grain. Yeah. I must say, Corodius, how much I hate you sometimes. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not feeling so good about this. Uh, can we at least leave enough for them to eat? Absolutely. They'll be fed, don't worry. No, no, no. I mean, can we leave enough for them to eat? Let's not give them rice. At least have the dignity of eating their own crop. No. Because we would be breaking our, uh, our deal with uh, that other fucker. Well, no, no it wouldn't we wouldn't. Be. Our deal was that it wouldn't be sold. On the market. That was the deal. We have to guarantee it. So we do it. Don't yeah, worry. we'd be Don't... guaranteeing listen, it. Listen, listen, they listen, listen, listen. Sell an, an amount that they're just going to eat, right? Yeah. If we give them enough to just eat, they know that they can't sell it because listen. then they would be starving. Look, I understand this, and this is bad business. I understand that too. Just listen to me. I will compensate her for it after this thing is over. We need to be seen to do Tyrion's, uh, Titian, Titian's bidding in this. I will compensate her for the Pharaoh after this blows over. You have my word. But don't let on to these people here. They don't they should not know yet. So you stand and watch as over the next three or four hours the sun rises steadily into the heavens, the day growing hotter and hotter, the dust rising sear and baked around you your employed bearers empty the grain silos of the Freydlavs. You catch sight of Jorah Freydlav watching you from the upper windows of the house, just devastated beyond words at what's happening. And you head back to the city. Riding out to meet you, As a crodlu, a light riding crodlu with four heavy war crodlus churning along beside it. And even from this distance, you can mark the banner of the Rassi of Minthur. He pulls up his, uh, his crodlu and his guard stationed there by the side of the road. Looks down at you from the saddle. So I understand there was a bit of a to do this morning at the Freylav Estates. Yes. That would be their grain you're carrying, eh? Yes. Excellent. Well done. Well done. You have done a great service to the Minthor family this day. 
My father is extremely pleased with me. And so by extension, I am pleased with you. Um, I have a kind uh, <clears throat> warning for you. Do not go there and gloat. Come, come. I am merely paying a visit to a poor Jora in a time of distress. You will not go there and gloat or this deal is off. I'm doing fresh conditions now, are we? Yes. What does it matter to you? You've done your bidding, you've got your soldiers for your army, and you've helped us out to buy a pretty copper piece along the way, I don't mind my saying. And leave it at that. <sighs> you sound just like father. Very well. If you, uh, he looks across around the group, ever have any of you in need of um, further gainful employment? Um, please, feel free to uh, approach the Mentha family. We always have need of good, solid-hearted folks such as yourself. My father has authorized me to um, pay you a, a, a bonus. He pulls a, a pouch and throws it towards you, Matthias. I catch it. For your troubles. And he turns and spurs his mount and his guards follow him. It's got ten silver it? pieces in it. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a, like a beggar, you know? <laughs> Terrible. <clears throat> Matthias? Can you promise me one thing? I don't know, Carodius. Can you please make sure that this fop dies? Oh, yes, I can definitely guarantee that. I thought you was going to say, do not kill him. Oh, no, 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 no. He'll have his comeuppance. Yes. Okay. But don't let it lead back to you, of course. Be smart about it. So. Just hope he's not a plant. Oh, that would be uh, that would be upsetting, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. A complete waste of resources replacing him. Uh, right? Is it is it <laughs> is it the, the Tithani next? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, Vildin Tithani is not actually. Uh, on his, in his estate, or should I say, he's not in the buildings. Word comes from his uh, from his guards that he's actually on a hunt, but they're willing to um, to lead you out to where that is. Turns um, out, <clears throat> yes, go ahead, please. Uh, da -da -da, here. Okay, uh, this time I use the summon Templar's ability. And I got two D4 yes. Templars. Templars. Actual Templars, yes, not yes. guards. Yeah. With all their spell casting powers. <clears throat> oh, wait, no. Wrong city. No. Yes. Six. What? Eight. Okay. Weird. Right, it's eight. Fine. Um, and these are uh, a company as you traipse across the back of the uh, of the Chirthani estate. You can see uh, the in the far distance, there's what appears to be a cactus forest. Grown large and wild, intertwining madly in and around each other, all different types. And about 200 yards outside the cactus forest, there's a little pavilion tent has been erected, a little small open-fronted one. And sitting in the front of that is uh, Vildin Tirathani, being fanned, um, sipping water from a, a large carafe, which a hand frost is holding next to him. Um, when we get round to nightfall, uh, uh, Lee, by the way, just remind me of that, okay? Yep. And uh, standing in front of the pavilion tent are six armed men, just, well, loose leather armor, 
but he's just carrying a crossbow, which they're pointing at the uh, at the cactus forest. And as, as you troop up, uh, the old dean spots you. Ah, my friends, come in, come in. Hand for us, serve them drinks now. You're just in time. The hunt's about to reach its end. Uh, please, have a drink. Set it yourselves down. There are indeed some small low divans and <clears throat> those sofas and cushions upon which you can apportion yourself I'm, on the, uh, the carpeted floor of the tent. I'm afraid I have to uh, <clears throat> decline your offer. Just, 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 I'm, just I'm, no, here they come. No, please, please, a moment. Um, out of the cactus forest, um, there is a small ragged line of wildlife. From, from within the cactus forest, you can hear the sound of people shouting, Hi! Hey, go! Go! And what sounds like banging pots and pans together. Um, Zatau, uh, a few desert rabbits, um, one particularly startled, startled wild caru come charging out of the forest. Fire! Vildeen says. <laughs> and the crossbow is... Thunk! One of them shoots a, uh, a, a, a Zatal. Um, one of them catches the carrow right between the eyes, but it doesn't die. And it just kind of starts staggering about the place, lowing and honking. Um, others bag very small amounts of game. Excellent, bag them up now. And uh, his interest is almost immediately gone. Vildine turns towards you. Uh, you were saying? Yes, I have to uh, tell you I come with unfortunate news. You've got my steel, haven't you? Well, we went to uh, obtain the steel <clears throat> from uh, the Bureau, and um, then we were informed that um, you unfortunately are under investigation. What? What for? The murder of Kalak. What? Yes. How? Uh, well, I, I, I disguised myself as as Rikus and stabbed him with it. Um, I am not uh, uh, one to to state how you how you plotted this, but this is at the moment under investigation. I, I didn't plot anything. Hmm. But. <clears throat> It's fairly certain, of course, that then that, of course, immediately made uh, happen that your requested steel cannot be delivered, of course. You understand this. Yes, I understand about the steel, but... Uh, but this, is, this, is, this is absurd. Who's put you up to this? Come on, who's put you up to this? We both know that I had nothing to do with Kanak's death. Who's put you up to this? Whatever they're paying you, I'll double it. Oh, 30,000 steel, maybe, then. Oh, very funny, yes. I let her, <clears throat> I let him uh, sit down and let the, the coin fall until he figures out what triggered this whole thing. It, 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 if that's pinned on us... The, the crown will confiscate my estates and I'll end my days in prison. Hmm. I see your predicament. Maybe I can uh, intercede on your behalf uh, by you making amends and then see whether I can make this investigation go away. What exactly are you talking about? Are you threatening me? I am not in no position to threaten you. How could I? I have no authority to threaten you. I'm I'm a merely a messenger here, and I'm I'm willing to intercede on your behalf, as I came hat in hand earlier to ask for your cooperation. He looks around the group. So, you're Tithian's new toadies, are you? Uh, is is that a message you want me to convey? Stop playing games with me. This is because I asked for the steel. Now I'm saying, now you're saying no. And in fact, if you don't give us the troops, we'll pin some false accusation on you. She respectfully takes her distance and lets him come to his own conclusions. Matthias, what do you have to say about this? Come on, man, I've been in your house. You have. 
and I what I said earlier. Is... And what I said earlier, I was sincere about. And I'm just as shocked as you are. But Thais is not to blame in, in any of this. The investigation doesn't come or did, did not start with him. Who did it start with? Give me a name. All I care about is the survivability of Tyr. It needs its people. It needs its lords. It doesn't need greed right now. I'm sorry. Greed? You're saying that I should give this the, the I should give my troops to Tyr for nothing. And if I don't agree, you're going to pin some hideous accusation on me. I'm not pinning anything on you, I'm sorry. You absolutely are. I thought you were one of us, Matthias. The, from 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 these this hired muscle and he waves his hand dismissively at Constantine, Bagal Magal, and Tic Tic. I would expect it from them. From a from a queen of the fields and a beast of the forest. All of these people here fight for Tyr and its survivability. They're not my hired muscle. They're my friends. My clutch. All I care about right now is feeding the people that are starving and making sure Tyr has a future. Well, it seems to me that your clutch wears black. Well, if that's how you feel, I don't know what yours wears. It certainly does not wear Tyr's colours. How dare you? How dare you? We are Tyr. Yes. My family has been here since longer than the Sorcerer King. We are the Thanes of Tyr. How dare you? Then you should understand where I am right now. I want Tyr to survive. And I was hoping that you would as well. Even though that you have no heir, no one left to carry your name, maybe one last ounce of your belief, your history for this city would go that little bit extra far. Tyr will survive, but you may find that you will not. Take your message back to Tithy and he will have his troops. But you will pay for the insult you have levied against me this day. We'll all pay some way. Yes, we will. As I said, this accusation has not come from me. Okay. So, can I convey that um, your association with any accusations towards the king are also uh, now off topic? You do what you'd like, Templar Chirodius. I've given you my answer. You'll get your troops. Now get off my land before I have you shot for trespassing. Leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. The afternoon is wearing away to night time by the time you're actually back in the city itself. Mm, that was unpleasant. There's been nothing about these last two days that has been pleasant. Tick, what tick, you're having to... Go turn. ahead, please. No, go ahead. Tick, tick turns to Matthias. <laughs> he called me and my people animals. But my people fight as one. We do not have arguments about defending Clutch. He is small man. Sadly so. I was hoping he well, would be much bigger. Then again, our actions were also not the most pretty, were they? He forced our hand. That he did, yes. And life is harsh. 
even for nobles like him. But rest assured, we have earned a powerful enemy here today. We haven't really made any friends either. That's what you get when you... Well, if we get it done, you get a, a powerful ally and endorsement from up high, but... Yeah. Are we well, really, wa- are we really, are we really waiting for that? Corrupt. Is the question. I, you've been uh, rubbing elbows with these people now for how long, Matthias? Yes. Months. And I hate the, many. Ma- of the them. majority of them are corrupt. You realize, right? Oh, I know so. But working for someone that's corrupt doesn't make it right either. All I care about right now is just the survivability of this place. Well, well, then keep in mind the people at the top don't really care too much. That's not their bodies that you're going to be thrown against what's coming. So they really don't care. In I'll their eyes, the they're going to well. make it because they're sitting at the top. Yeah, they don't care because you don't make them care. That's the thing. You don't have the power to make them care. As soon as you do, they start taking notice. That's the moment they take notice. Anyway, let's call this uh, dirty day to an end. And now you've wound your way off Caravan Way and through the quiet alleys of the Noble Quarter just by uh, Matthias's villa. So as you're passing down through, uh, through the main thoroughfare that you hear a couple of voices in one of the side alleys unusual for the noble quarters and you're sure you recognize one of them there's some kind of hushed conversation going on listen. you're just going to carry on back to the villa uh, listen. i'm going to try to get a little closer while uh, knocking an arrow who who recognizes the, the voices by the way yeah the question is who recognized it and if anything well, you've heard his voice more than once. You're sure one of them is Templar Rack. He's talking in low, hushed, urgent tones. Um, Tin, if you want to use your new urban camo, you can give me a hide in shadows roll to move uh, to move closer without being seen. Oh, that's good. Nice. Okay. You slink down the alleyway, blending in completely with its shadowy wall. And you come in kind of halfway through a conversation. You can learn. What does that mean? I rely on your information. I suggest you come up with more useful news and quickly. The second voice replies, you're certain it's Rack. Look, you don't understand how difficult this is. If the word got out to the wrong people and, and there are expenses, you, you're not being paid enough. Is that it? The first speaker says. Is, is that what this is all about? No. No, it's, it's not that. It, it's just that these things take time. You can't very well go up to one of the councillors and demand information. Once I could have, but this damn freedom business just got started. It's, it's all gone. Things have to be done slowly. Carefully now. Enough. What do you have for me? I've got to have something to report. I suggest you make it good. All right, look, you know Rikus commands the army, right? But it's in name only. There are divisions between him and the other commanders. Uh, the, uh, the the nobles are fractured as, among, as, as regards who's going to give troops or not. Uh, it's a weakness. Uh, uh, there are these fault lines. You could exploit them. You could make use of that. At any rate, it's delayed their march. The army won't be ready to take the field for another week at least. Maybe more. If at any point, by the way, you want to intervene or uh, interrupt this um, back and forth, please, please feel free. Oh, he's getting information, so <laughs> he's good right now. The first speaker, you can hear him grunt. That's much better. A week, eh? Time only works against Tyr and to Uric's favor. Thank you. 
can I see who he's um, dealing with? Uh, you can just make out a tall, broad-shouldered, bearded man dressed in uh, a merchant's smock, um, a hat. Rack you can't see, but you can see the shadows that he's standing in just to the side of the alley. The tall, bearded man nods, pulls a, a dust cowl across his face, and hurries off in the direction of the I, Warrens, actually. Um, I'm going to, right as they're, like, when they're going, yes, I'm going, actually going to, um... Yes, to <laughs> yeah, right, I'm going to, I'm going to release the arrow that I had knocked to the opposite side. Like, so if, here's the alley. If we were here, yep. and we can, I came in this way, mm -hmm. I'm going to release it to make some noise at the opposite end to try to force them out the side we were... Okay, uh, give me a roll for that, please. Just treat the designer class 10. You're unlikely to miss, but if you roll a one, um, we can have some fun. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, just roll uh, a hit on my bow? Yeah. <laughs> if I get a one, I'm going to piss myself laughing. Um... No, okay, fine. Um, the arrow arcs through the darkness, ricochets off a basket of grain, sends it toppling to the floor, and... Uh, the bearded man immediately, without a word, breaks into a run down the far alleyway. Um, Rax steps out of hiding and kind of looks around. Are they moving towards the uh, towards uh, where our party was? No. Uh, Rack fails to spot you. Uh, but it's very clearly him. What are you doing? We want them. Um, which way did the, uh, the gentleman go? He went running off in the direction of the Warrens. So get a city map up for you. Okay. Um, how far behind me is the group? So I'm assuming they... Uh, I would have told them, like, wait here, you know, as yes. I went. Yeah. So, so, so depends. If they're just at the end of the alley, then... Yeah, so if you look at the map here, this area here is near where Matthias lives. That's where you heard them. Okay. Okay? The guy with uh, the heavy beard has run off in this direction toward the Warrens here. Okay. Then, um... Rack is actually looking around, trying to figure out what's I would, going on. So, from where I am, I would call out um, uh, Clutch to me, and I would release um, more arrows <laughs> at the man running towards the uh, the Warrens. Okay, I'm right. To, I'm looking, yeah, I'm looking to disable. I'm, I'm trying to take them down, not, not take them out. Nice, okay. Um, so, you can give me a, uh, a couple of rolls for that, please. Um, how many? Uh, so, you just need the two on the, uh, yep, the arrows? Yep, just two, please. Yep. Oh, he's human, so add four to those. Yeah, add four. Okay, right. Two beautiful shots. Um, the human species is known for its weakness in its hamstrings. You put an arrow in one of each. And uh, he goes pitching, ah, scutters clear across the floor, uh, screaming and yelling at the two arrows that are currently sticking out from uh, from his uh, from his thighs. There's no need for offer initiative here. Um, what do you guys want to do? Rack is, Rack is quite literally running across the square in the other direction now. Um, you can yeah, see I, a panicked look on his face. I go after Rack. I say, tick, tick. Okay. Yeah. Bagal, bagal. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Okay, uh, what about Corodius and, uh, and Matthias? Uh, well, Matthias knows tick, tick has got him covered. He just says, tick, tick, <laughs> subdue. <laughs> it's like command words. Command. Um, I will head off with Tin towards the bearded man and subdue him. Okay. Um, it, it, it's Rack, um, um, it's, he's in sight, eh? I can see him. Yes, you can see him. Okay, he's, I will. He, he, he emerges from the shadows, running across the courtyard. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and ESP hear him. Okay, uh, right, so um, you see, you learn straight away that his mind is closed. He has mm -hmm. sonic power points. Yes. Um, tick, tick, you and Bengal, 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 uh, close the distance to Rack in seconds. You're there first. Uh, Bengal, Bengal presumably either runs, you either run straight through the uh, through the courtyard or you're bouncing from the rafters and the rooftops to get to him from above. I want to be like up higher. So I'll yeah. be, you know, jumping across. Scramble up and run along the uh, the rooftops toward him. Um, Constantine and Matthias, you race off after the bearded individual who's currently rolled over on the ground. He sees the two of you coming toward him and relaxes. There is a brief pulse of psionic energy and 20. Yeah, he vanishes. I'm going to track him with the blood he's losing. 
Uh, he doesn't appear to be moving anywhere. You'd think it's probably a teleport spell. There's a, just a swirling of air in the dust around where he was lying, showing that air has rushed in to fill the space. And there's even a gentle... What do you hear? Uh, I'm still going to try to track him. Okay. Um, you see fairly quickly that he's not leaving any trail from this place at all. Doubtless he's either dimension doored or teleported to somewhere uh, that's, uh, that's not currently where he's being attacked. Um, let's, uh, let's take a look at the poor Templar Rack, shall we? Uh, as you come chasing toward him, yeah, he sees you on the rooftops. Tick, tick. Um, you come charging at him. He's grabbing for something out of his uh, out of his tunic. It looks like a tiny little packet of paper, about that big. Um, well, can I th can I try and uh, if I if I think I can't reach him before he uses whatever that is, I will throw a chatkacha to try and disarm him. Okay, that'll need an initiative check, please. Uh, Rack is on a seven, eight, nine, ten. What about you? Twelve. A twelve. Okay, Bagal Bagal. Okay. Are you involving yourself oh. in that as well at all? Yes. Um, Unless, yeah, I'll try uh, and, um, just jump from down. The, yep, and Anish from you as well, please. Then. Okay. I'll do... Um, four. Okay, cool. Right. Bagal Bagal, what do you do? Right, so um, I'm going to... Obviously, I see that he's taken out this little thing, and the yeah. first thing that I want to do is stop him. So um, I'm going to throw one of my darts to try and, you know, D disarm him. Or just, you know, yeah, cut his hand, whatever. Okay, roll me so, a, CM a CMB, please. Not, uh, not the unarmed. No, yeah, with weapon, yeah. 13. Um, a warrior he is not. The dart flies across the intervening space and strikes him in the hand. The small packet hits the floor. Um, he shrieks and throws himself sideways. Uh, as it hits the ground, it, it ruptures and there is a <clears throat> of dust. I'm Vile, sure. dark, black dust. Uh, <gasps> he fails his saving throw. <laughs> With a six. And coughing and <clears throat> spluttering staggers forward on his hands and knees. Um, there's fluid pouring out of his mouth and spattering on the ground beneath him as uh, the dust settles all down around him. I, I stop well, running well, towards him. To him. <laughs> <laughs> I, back, I back the fuck away from him. Yeah, same. <laughs> okay. Um, he stands and uh, you can see him takes hold of his, his blade in one hand and a ring in the other. Um, and tightens his grip around the ring, and you can just see his lips move as he must utter what has to be a command word of some kind. Fire erupts out of the ring, like a fountain, spurts outward, lands on the ground, and becomes a coherent form, rising to become a swirling, fiery inferno some eight or nine feet high. Pseudopods <laughs> erupt out of it, coughing and spluttering, wiping his, his chin clean, he points at you, tick, tick. Kill. Uh-oh. The elemental surges towards you. Even before I get a chance to move? Uh, no, it's on. I'm running initiative now. Should we roll initiative? I didn't get uh, an action. Tick, tick hasn't had his action yet. Okay. <laughs> well, Three. tick, tick, word of advice? Fucking leave. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, tick, 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 you're now. The elemental will be on you in, uh, within seconds. You have to okay, change I, action, so it's initially um, changed. You said there were, uh, there's elevation around me? There's houses and stuff? I think. Houses all around, yes. Okay, I'm going to jump onto the nearest roof. Yep. Um, and uh, move as far away as I can across those roofs. But yes, as I'm running, I'm going to throw all three chat at, at Templar Rack. Templar Rack, okay. So, no longer uh, non-lethal damage. Yeah, screw him. <laughs> we'll talk to his corpse. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, he's armor class 14, so... Uh, oh, two so hits. Two, two of those hits. Right. Nice. The one that misses comes back. That's 24 damage. <laughs> okay. Uh, Rack is quite literally ah! <laughs> um, badly poisoned already. The one Chakata sinks into his side, the other one goes into his neck, <laughs> collapses to the ground, rolls onto one side, coughing and 
dragging himself along the uh, along the square, desperate to find something, anything I, that can stop am, what's happening to him. Carry on. I'm going to uh, try and uh, find a source of water, a trough, uh, anything, a fountain. Uh, yeah, there, there, there's no troughs and fountains. Uh, I know, uh, I know. But I'm to be fair, looking. actually, you're just behind Matthias's villa. He's got a well in the front of his villa. <gasps> Okay, we're gonna run there. <laughs> okay, um, so uh, Carodius, Constantine, um, Matthias, Matthias and Constantine, as you rejoin your companions, uh, you can see that Rack is sorely injured, possibly moments away from death, um, but there appears to be a fire elemental, which is trying to figure a way to get up onto the nearby rooftop um, to get at its designated target, which is currently Tick Tick. Right, um, we'll take an initiative for the group there, I think. Just to be clear, the elemental's moving away from Rack? It's moving away from Rack because Tick Tick's moving away and it's chasing Tick Tick. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, my goal is to move to Rack and make sure that he lives because I want this okay, bastard. Okay, so Come let's on. have an uh, image, is that, please. Is that just a roll 10? I rolled, one, a, yeah. I rolled a 7. I rolled seven a 1. For, 7 for Tick Tick, 1 for Corodius. Bagal, Bagal. 9. 9. Constantine. 2. Sweet. And uh, Matthias. A seven, but there's not really much I can do against the fire elemental. Okay, Carodius. Um, I uh, try and get a, um, a combat mind in uh, in action. Yep, let's see it. Yep. Yeah, nice. Okay, so that's a plus plus one to initiative for everyone. Yeah, or minus one. Yeah. Okay, um, so your initiatives all drop down by one. Uh, Constantine, yours can't, because that's that would be when he casts the spell, uh, manifest the power, should I say? Uh, however, Constantine, you're next. Um, so I have my blades out because he's defensive as always, and I'm moving towards um, Rack. I want to make sure that he's uh, not dead, but I, I don't want to uh, him to, you know, kill me. So my okay. goal is to get over there and detain him. Right. Okay, so you race over toward Rack, and if you want to actually physically detain him, that's a CMB roll. Okay, is that also with a plus four because of uh, uh, he's human? Or is yeah, Rack no, human? No, it's not, a, it's not a two hit roll. It is human, it's a CMB roll. So just roll CMB on your Okay, on your roll thing. CMB. That's not oh, good. no, okay. So you reach for him, he pulls himself to his feet, staggers sideways, and bunching his legs underneath him, leaps from the ground of the alley right onto the roof of one of the nearby houses. It's a jump of some 30 to 40 feet. He doesn't even, even seem to put any effort into it. Seconds later, he's on the nearby house and uh, turns and starts to stagger off across towards in the direction of the ziggurat, the stadium, and presumably the Golden City. Uh, I, would just, I would call out to the group second because I'd say uh, Rack is on the move. Okay, at that moment, um, Tick Tick, the elemental, reaches the edge of the building that you're on and lashes a fiery pseudopod <laughs> out towards you. You and Matthias get your actions at the same time. I'm just going to roll for the elemental. Twenty-three, exactly. Oh my god. Okay. And damage is three d eight, which is six. So fourteen. 14 points of fiery damage lick across you as the elemental pseudopod lashes out towards where you were. And that leaves you on 35. You're feeling a little bit smoky. And so you and Matthias, uh, what do you want to be doing at that particular moment? I'm going um, to throw my Chatkacha at the elemental. Okay. Chatkacha passes clear through the elemental and returns to your outstretched hand, slightly smoky. So no, even... no damage. Doesn't even appear to okay, interact I'm use, with the fire. I'm going to use my full movement to avoid it, so I'll make a wide berth around it on the roofs, and I'm going to run directly for a Templar Rack. So, so combat move away from the elemental and across to where uh, to where Rack is. Is that is that right? Uh, yes, unless I can move further. But I, uh, uh, okay, you know. it hits you again as you flee. I'm not. I have. 
I have. Um, do you have rapid, rapid retreat? retreat? I do. Okay, then the connect the both of the locals to connect and use nimbly stay away of the uh, lashing tongues of fire. Well done, you, uh, Matthias. <laughs> um, can I use a barbed dart to? Oh, I don't want to kill Rack, so can I fire two barbed darts at him to not kill him? Uh, it's difficult to do non-lethal damage from a distance with a barbed dart. Yeah. To be fair. Like shoot him in the Achilles or hair? something. <laughs> in the hair. Um, obviously, I don't. Obviously, I'm, these are not poisoned. I can use needles, I suppose. If you get him down to negative hit points, right? Yeah, he'll okay. bleed out, and he uh, so you right. know, it's I'll fire doing enough damage. And oh, yeah. Go ahead. I'll fire the first one. Uh, the, 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 the armor class twenty-eight. Beautiful. Okay, give me damage on that first, please, because that might be significant. Six damage. Oh shit! Okay, right. Uh, rack drops, goes sprawling across the rooftop and skids to a halt, kind of face down, uh, just near the edge of, uh, of the guttering. From the elemental goes a loud, high-pitched shrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
There is, because uh, if you have a 20 on mind leak, which I can force, yes, I, I can ask one probing question, and I know exactly ah. which question I wanted to ask him. Okay, so no, you, do you have anything that can reduce psionic power points? No, I don't. Okay. No, His mind is a, a slumbering ball of glass. Okay. I thought okay. maybe that when he's unconscious, that defense goes, but no. Um, but you nevertheless pull yourself up onto the rooftop. Constantine, you reach Rack's side. Not only is he bleeding out, the blood is white. It's pooled around his body, put, running down the rooftop, smeared around his mouth. Oh, fuck. Um, uh, so the things I'm going to do is, one is I have my rope on me. Yep. Um, so I want to bind him while he's um, unconscious, legs, arms. I have 50 feet of it. I don't think I'm going to have too much of a problem. Yeah, you bind him up. Um, and then I'm going to try to use medicine on him because um, I don't know really what to do for, you know, these freakish uh, fake people. All right. You and, and the question, is this to... the same thing I saw with the lady? Is this the same? It looks story? identical. So you can roll me a healing check, please, at a penalty of minus 10 if you have healing. God, you cool. Me. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, beautiful! Oh. There you nice. go. It's a nasty, messy, botched job, but it gets the job done. The white stuff starts com stops coming out of him, and he carries on breathing. Count that as a win? Uh, I, I don't count that as a win. I really don't. <laughs> well, that's just that's just. I'm afraid that's overly critical. He's nasty. Do you see? This <laughs> <laughs> and, like, okay. The last thing I would stuff. do is I'd put my, uh, my I would put my sword towards his throat, just to kind of a. Uh, if, don't yep. even move your head. Don't even yep. move your friggin' head. Okay, um, Bagal, Bagal, you skid around, uh, around the corner of the entrance to Matthias's villa. Uh, the pool is just ahead of you as you go charging toward it. Heat <laughs> rises behind you, and uh, the fire elemental slams for you. No thanks. At 10, that's gonna hit armor class 18. It just singes the hair on the back of your head <laughs> ever so slightly, and <laughs> Wooza. Wooza. and you splash yourself into the well um, hanging kind of dearly onto the edge uh, it's actually quite deep there's a very lot of water in here but is actually really fucking rich come to think about it hmm. um, after having attacked you the elemental then turns his attention to character number oops that's cocked roll that again character number one that's Matthias Matthias as you come racing down the street the elemental Billows out of the uh, out of the well house, having failed to snare Bagal Magal, spies you and <laughs> flares an excited colour of uh, pale blue flames and rushes you. Initiative, please. Uh, good. Is only one um, Are we re-rolling initiative? Because I didn't get an action. Did you not? No. Okay, take an action. I must have rubbed you out by mistake. <laughs> Um, I'm going to throw the heartward spear at the fire elemental. <laughs> righty. Okay. Uh, go for it. The arm, um, the, it's armor class is 18. Okay. It's just the one throw, I suppose. So it is just the one throw. Please be good. 29. Hooray. Sweet. Yes. And damage against large, please. I think it's the same. Yeah, it's the same. Okay. 10. 10. Huzzah. And then I use what movement remains to me to seek sh to, to seek cover. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Initiate for the new round, please. The heartwood spear, by the way, punches clear through the creature, emerges on the other side, smoking slightly, but you can see dark ripples of like smoke pulsing through the center of the elemental. But we suspect it probably did some damage. Well, that's good. Did I did I get my go? I don't, I think, oh yeah, I think I ran after him. Yeah, you ran. Uh, Bagal Bagal, Inish Hi. was. Five. Constantine. Seven. Matthias. Um, Twelve. Twelve. Tick, tick. Uh, just a quick question before I roll. Um, yep. If I want to move to pick up the spear again, what do I roll for initiative? Just roll regular d10. It's gewoon mee begrepen. Oh, okay. That's so Dutch, that's isn't eight. that weird? Yeah, that's so Dutch. <laughs> and Chirodius. Mooi meegenomen. Mooi meegenomen, ja. Ja. 
And this Carodius. I hate when you guys I'm speak muted. Spanish. I don't understand. I know Spanish. You're muted. Oh, you're muted. We can't hear you. Three. Three. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. Um, go then. For all of you non Dutch speakers out there, he just um, said it's a nice bonus. Quick. Um, we're still standing with uh, with, with Vrak, right? Yeah, so you have, you've, you've arrived next to Constantine on the rooftop, and you can see that he's tied up. He, he's, he has bound Rack in more than one way, both his wounds and his arms and legs, and is okay. standing there with his sword against his throat. Uh, okay. Does he have anything on him, uh, like a, a paper or um, anything that he got from the other guy? No, he's a pretty bad spy, but he's not that bad of a spy. <laughs> he has a very fine set of boots that look like they made, might have been made from brick leather. Uh, a little golden ring with a red gem on it, uh, which you actually seen him use to summon the fire elemental, yeah. uh, and a belt pouch uh, which actually contains gold coins from the looks of it. Okay, uh, let's get, ooh, let's get five, five of them. Let's get everything that he has off him. This millionaire. <laughs> and. Uh, I hand it to Constantine the whole uh, the whole lot of the uh, pick of him. Okay, you strip him and hand the material to Constantine. Bagal, Bagal, you're kind of in the well. Uh, yeah, I was uh, wondering, um, would it be possible for me? I, I assume that Matthias is like in the same vicinity as I am in the well area in the garden. He's actually in the street outside, being attacked by the elemental. Just he just just didn't quite manage to make it through to his. Right. Uh, his would house. it be possible? for me to run to where Matthias is, perhaps like on top of a wall, look, overlooking the street, and like toss him the Sword of Camelot? Absolutely. There is a fine tradition in our games of people throwing swords at each other. It would be a shame, it would be a shame to break it now. Yeah. To me, I right, whipped so I mine need, to yours. I just need twin dex checks from both of you, please. You both have to pass. One to throw, okay. one to catch. So um, yeah, you run out of the uh, out of the well house, little tiny wet hobbit feet print, scale the wall, and you're like Matthias, and throw. Oh, beautiful shot from uh, Magal Magal. Like the sword of Camelot foul. arcs through the air. Uh, it has, of course, come out of the water, so it's dripping in the late afternoon sunlight. Ooh. Little beads all along the length of the blade as it snap lands in uh, Matthias's outstretched hand. And um, Constantine, nice. you're up next. Um, so, I, I, first thing I'll do is uh, thank the lady for giving me all this stuff to carry. And, <laughs> um, and I'm assuming from where I am, I can't see any of the, the others, correct? Yeah, they've. Uh, I mean, if you stepped away to the end of the street and looked down the road, you'd see it happening. They've literally run off down uh, uh, toward well, the villa. Good enough, because I'm going to start dragging uh, Rack and. Uh, so you, you drag him down off the rooftop and towards the villa, right? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, we gotta go there, right? Nice, okay, tick, tick. Um, I'm going to run and pick up the spear, but I don't know if I can use it in the same round. As I pick it up. Uh, yeah, sure, it's it's within your combat, uh, combat range. Okay, I pick it up and throw it at the elemental again. You skirt around the elemental, it snatches at you with its pseudopod, but you are ra retreating far too rapidly for it to land a blow. Grab the uh, the. But when you pick the um, the spear up, by the way, um, yeah. its thorns appear exceptionally sharp, and you kind of they kind of prick you in your hand. It's painful to hold it. You throwing? Oh, I'm not he, allowed to throw this spear now. He, he's armor class eighteen. Oh, okay. Um, I will I will hold off. Actually, I'm gonna. Okay, so you, you you hold your action, Matthias. I'm gonna hold off. Um, okay, I will attack with the sword. I'm confused by the spear. <laughs> um, I don't know what I would be rolling, so should I just just use a dagger and then add the plus two to it? Yes, it's a plus that'll, two that'll weapon, isn't it? Yeah, that'll be fine. And it's D8 for damage. Oh, mm. sweet. The blade of uh, Camelot flares yeah. with golden light. Just oh, it strikes into the billowing, fiery heart of the elemental. Nineteen's not a crit, damage. is it? In this game? Nope. D eight for damage, please. D eight for damage. Yeah. For three plus, it's a light. Oh no, I don't get that. You don't get so. Just two for the sword. 
That's three for the sword and then whatever it pluses What's it What's your has. strength? Uh, my strength would be a bonus plus zero, but 12, obviously so would, it wouldn't be a dex, bo a dex weapon, yeah, would it? Gotcha. It is, <laughs> yes. Um, but I haven't got do you, that proficiency. Do you have piercing blow? No? You don't have piercing mm, blow? No. No, nope, so it's no extra, no extra damage to you. But still, it's a decent blow. The, as I say, the blade and then I will retreat. I Rapid retreat. Back. Rapid retreat. Uh, can I do an acrobatics in that? I suppose I can't. No, you've used your attack this round. Yep. Uh, as you back away, it lunges for you, hissing with barely comprehensible elemental anger. Oh, solid hit. And you take four, eight damage. I'm immune to fire damage. No, you aren't. Okay. <laughs> You're on 38 hit points, slightly singed. You rapidly pat at your expensive clothes to uh, to put them out. Okay, uh, Inish people, please. Um, I'm going to... Uh, uh, yeah, you have a held action if you want to take it. Hit it. Can I, can I, can I uh, literally grab a bucket of water and throw it at the elemental? Uh, yes, but the amount of heat that's coming off it, the water is probably just going to evaporate. Oh, so water throwing... Okay, no, never mind then. A bucket of water isn't going to damage uh, a 12-foot tall fire elemental, no. Okay. Bagal, Bagal, I see a two there. Constantine. I'm going to... A three. Nice. Matthias. Three. Also a three. <coughs> tick, tick. Uh, one second, I'm just... Corodius. An eight. Looks a bit there. We still have the combat mind, right? So I'm on, on yes, nine. Uh, so on that's nine. minus one uh, for me as well. Seven. Mine's still a three because that was a roll with a dagger. Wait, do I have combat mind? Yes. Everyone mm -hmm. does. Oh, then I'm a two. Okay. Right, Bagal, Bagal, and Constantine on a two, please. Um, I was going to ask, um, would using my psionic ability do anything against this? Almost certainly it would, yes. Well, all right, well, I'm doing that then. I'm using uh, my, what's it called, again? Ballis ballistic attack, isn't it? Yes. Yep. So what am I rolling here? So um, click the click the, the button next to the uh, to the power. Uh, this one. Yes. So that's a fail by one point. Aww. Just just fails to manifest. You can feel the psychic energy burgeon within your mind, and then <laughs> fails to. Uh, but you don't you don't you don't lose any PSPs. So um, at least there's that. Yeah. It's got the batteries. At the same time, Constantine. Um, Constantine, uh, now seeing the elemental going towards the villa, is going to take a moment, put the boots um, and pouch in his bag, and then just put the ring on. Okay. Immediately, uh, your mind is linked to that of the elemental. You can I don't want feel that. it. A, a uh, <laughs> powerful force summoned to this plane, bound by the energies of the ring, answering to the one who wears it. Um... He's just gonna say, say and think. Stop. Immediately, the elemental <laughs> stops moving. Tell him to get in the well. Uh, Matthias, anything from you? <laughs> Have I seen this is happening? Am I aware yeah, so of you, it? You heard him say stop, and the elemental stops. And his face is currently like this. <laughs> <laughs> I will just go into a defensive mode. I need to go okay. back where it came from. Using acrobatics or whatever you want me to do. Yep, make, a, make an acrobatics check, please. Hey, I'm guys, if we get a couple more of these foul, rings, we could summon Captain Planet. I can't foul, I don't think, Mark. You can't? Okay, so fine. Yep, that's uh, kind of acrobatically ready to uh, to give yourself a plus for armor class bonus at a moment's notice. Uh, Corodius, uh, your action was to... Uh, to give sound advice? Yes. <laughs> uh, what was that advice, Corodius? To let you go back where it came from. The question is, are we still in rounds? <laughs> uh, if you want to, if you want that to be something that you do, the only other person to go is Tick Tick this round. I was, I was going to hold and see what happened because um, I, I was confused by everything. So <laughs> if, that's fine. If, if Kyrodius says, you know, tell it to go back where it came from, then he would say, go back where you came from. 
Okay. And in your mind, there is the way that you can hear sparks rise up from uh, a log when it shifts in the fire. And then that's a voice. Then a voice. I obey, master. And it's gone. Cool. Nothing more that sparks spiraling around each other. And, uh, and then only the warmth on the air. That's handy to have. That was horrible. What's the highly illegal? Yeah, since when do Templars care about legalities? Uh, that's what the Templars for. <laughs> so you. Be a Templar? I mean, it looks exactly like the thing we found as a Lady Diamino. Yes. But this one is alive. That's the difference. We can question this one still, maybe. Hmm. And during this How conversation, I'm just standing there. I have not moved. <laughs> <laughs> um, Take the care. Yes, you're dragging Rack's body into uh, into the villa? Yes. Yeah. How badly hurt okay. is the group? I mean, I know I got hit. And I think Tick Tick got hit. I got hit. I'm on 30. Uh, I'll do a quick rundown. There's not an awful lot of injuries going around. Uh, only one injured. Matthias on a 38. Tick Tick on 35. So I've only lost four, yeah? He's lost like 20 um, something. <laughs> okay. So maybe Whoever's we dragging use the sword the rack, tick -tick. I'll just follow slowly behind him. He's just <clears> in <throat> his hand with the ring on. He's just walking like this. Like... You can take <laughs> the ring off. Smart. If you don't like I'll, it, take the ring off. <laughs> I'll heal. <laughs> He's in a little bit of shock right now. At least give him a minute. <laughs> I look at the spear, by the way. Are those thorns still there? They've retracted back into the spear. What the fuck? So within a few moments, you are within the villa. The servants go around lighting candles for the evening. And you settle down in the, in the salon, I presume with Rack's weird white cabbage body on the table in front of you. I'd hand the sword back to Bengal and I say, um, I think Tick Tick's hurt. Tin will remove the ring. He's going to put it inside, like, so inside of his uh, breeches, obviously, or his uh, pants. He has, obviously, a pocket that's inside where he mm -hmm. keeps things that are important, which is why he didn't put it in there in the first place during the battle. And he'll put the ring in there and just well, you guys should let them know that we have a, we have the spy. Uh, Bagal, Bagal, um, Matthias hands you the sort of camelock and you said what? Nothing, mm, I just, I you know, thanks. You're welcome. I, I said oh, I, I think Tick Tick's it. hurt. Oh. Tick Tick is hurt. Uh, well then, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, use it to heal him then. Both of its healing charges for the day? Um, That's 2d8 if it one is. For now, just okay. in case we need another one. Yep. So, how much is that? D8. 1d8? Yep. Three. Okay. 38 hit points there, as mm. at least some of the injuries dealt you by the fire elemental <laughs> are nicely cleaned away. On the table in front of you. <coughs> Rack coughs. You can actually see that his injuries are healing ever so slowly. Some of the ones dealt by the Chakachas are starting to close, and it's enough actually to bring him round. I, I, try, I pull my Chakachas out of his body. Okay. He has psionic abilities. Just be, be careful. White he knows, fluid he knows the runs way. down the side of his face. He blinks, looking around the room, trying to take in his surroundings. Doesn't have too much mobility, I, of course, given that you've I, tied him up. I'm staying out of his vision. Mark, okay. is there any sort of common knowledge as to a, a way to uh, hamper a psionic ability? Put a bucket on their head, a metal bucket. Do we have a metal bucket? I think he was trolling. Matthias, do you have a metal bucket lying around? <laughs> a chamber pot, perhaps? Well, either all that money's got to be worth this is what it's for. So yes, Matthias, you actually do have a metal bucket. Okay. Or yeah. bling that, pot, a bling that motherfucker. Cooking pot will do as well. Actually, it's normally it's a helmet, but um, yeah, a, okay. a bucket will do the job just yes, as good. No bucket. Okay. Well, I put a bucket on his head. <laughs> I can't see anything. Who are you? 
You don't need to see anything. I am a Templar of the King. You know this, don't you? Yes. Yeah, I will sure. have you all executed for this. I twank the back here with one of my daggers so that That's it like. really loud in here. You are going to be sorry. Twang. I'm um, gonna scratch him with my with an arrow just to see if he bleeds red or more white. White? What are you doing? Ah! Just wanted to see if it happens when they die or when they're awake. We have a way of identifying them now. I see. What are you? What am I? You don't know. You have no idea. And it unnerves you. Good. It should. Your know, time is at an end. Do the sensible thing and let me go. Why would we do that? Who do you work for? You misunderstand the situation here. You might have me bound. But I hold power over you. I'll say it for the third and last time. Let me go. And you can live. By the way, I'm... I'm ready to pounce at any second. Yeah. Uh, I When he says, let me go, uh, I'll... Tin's gonna knock an arrow um, and just kind of already have it fa pointing at him. Was it not enough that your little friend died in the market? You wish to bring further death upon yourselves. You recall, of course, he was there that day. He's the one that keeps casting like a fire weapon, right? Yeah, he was well into his flame blade before he lost all of his spells when Kalak died, yes. <laughs> Um, I look, look over to Kirodius. I'm not. I'm not. Um, he can't see any of this. He's got a bucket on his head. Um, I look over to Kirodius and I just like. I, I wander over to her and whisper in her ear. Get message to Tithia. Just let me check your proficiencies here quickly. Uh, has anyone got it? Oh, Corridius has it. Corridius, can you roll me a um, sonic detection, please? Let me have a look. That would be in my proficiencies. Yep, non weapon. I'm not seeing it. Okay, just uh, roll me a d20, please. Yeah, sorry. Is it flesh R, right? Do you want me to yeah. roll? Raplamore oh, well. in chat has just said he's just watched the first episode on YouTube. He's looking there forward is. to catching up. Uh, okay, they're they're both passes. Um, you that is very cool, actually. Thank you for uh, for joining us. Yeah, welcome. Um, you feel a pulse of psychic energy in the room. It's not coming from rack on the table. Any actions from anyone? Um, uh, yeah, she immediately puts. Uh, uh, um, um, we're being attacked, Salmatli, and not by him. I look around. You can see nothing, sense nothing. Corodius, your your mind is pulsing with a rising pressure. On the table, Rat gives a sudden startled gargle. <laughs> Now. And then the long exhalation of his death rattle. 
echoes around the room. That was unfortunate. Um, what just happened? Is it still, still going on, this pressure thing? No, it stops. It fades away almost immediately. So, what was that? I don't know, but we need to get the anyone close to the king, anybody who knows any of the plans, and scratch their arm. Are we mm. really going to have to go through every single Templar, every single council member? At least those on the uh, in, in in council, anybody who's high enough. I mean, we don't have to worry immediately about rank and file. We just need to hit the people that are most important right now. Uh, we don't know how many people are um, these um, creatures. We don't know how many of them have fire people with them. We just we need to kind of start whittling down. Did you whoever catch... the other guy was? He got away. Did you catch and... what they were talking about? <sighs> He basically was telling them all about how, you know, Rikus is basically for show, basically the division between the powers in the city. He was giving him information to attack and stated that they already heard the word that the longer it takes us as Tyr to prepare, the worse it is for us. So, so he from Uruk. Yeah, that's my assumption. Um, but I wasn't fast enough to stop him. I'm sorry. Well, the person he was speaking to did kind of have, have an Urukite accent, so that makes sense. Yes. yes. I think even he dropped the name of Uruk. Well, he did drop the name Uruk, but we... Yeah. So, we need to inform the king. We need to start weaning down, and we also need to know who was loyal to rack not in just title but who actually showed fealty because chances are they could be a spy as well he said masters yes plural yes so do you think that there's someone or something in control of these weird Plant people? Clearly. I think there has to be. That they're, is they're not clear. here for no reason. Well, and this this was clearly uh this but was they not are not they are not answer. they are not controlled by Uric. Hmm. Makes no sense. No, there's definitely um there it seemed to be money changing hands in order in, in, in exchange for the information. It was favors. Um so no, I would say they're not working for Uric, but they're sure as hell not working for us. But they're here. So what is it that they actually profit from? What are they wanting to do here? I don't know. He's dead now. So I don't know anything. I know uh, nothing you, more than what you do. And we can't question him beyond the beyond his life. Uh... No, they already tried with the lady. Yeah, exactly. And they got nothing. So I don't know what killed him. Whatever no. that was. No, that's why my first thought was to get King's counsel and anybody of importance and test them immediately to see if they are in fact one of these or they are a Tyrion. Good. Is it worth maybe talking to Rikus? To do what? Well, did you... Who in charge of army? Did yeah, you all... his name was mentioned? Yes. Yes, as a figurehead. Basically, all that was mentioned about Rikus was, yes, he may run, you know, the army, but it's in name only. Basically, Rack was letting this other person know that not to fear Rikus because Rikus truly holds no power. Um, that's not so something. Who holds the real power? Is the question. If it's not Rikus, we saw that today. Who holds the real power? Still the same people. There is one thing that is clear. Kalak knew about this. So why don't we search his libraries? How do you know he knew about this? He was doing something to defend against this, was he not? And didn't you say you don't know what you're doing? 
when you killed him. He did him. say that to us, yeah. It seemed like yeah. there was something worse that he feared. Yes. And now I think we understand what mm. that is. That's true. Okay. I All right then. Being in the dark like this. So maybe we should put in our three weeks of notice to we, uh, go to the library. We need to. Tell. I can't read. We need to tell. Well, we need to speak with the king. <laughs> let's go. I, I personally, I believe we should start with king and council to make sure that we know who we're working for <clears throat> and that we know that when we're making these plans for war or for state that... yes. yes you can read correct yes so if we the muscle and illiterate uh, begin finding or just testing uh the king's council to see, you know, who bleeds red and who doesn't. Perhaps you could do any kind of research into anything that we've seen today. We also not make it public. That's yeah. the thing. Uh, how, how are you going to do test all these people without them? Well, when them agreeing to it and uh, being ordered to do so, how, how are you going to do that? Well, that's Is a it, good reason to talk yeah. to. I'm sorry, go ahead, Bingo. We've already had, um, uh, for example, Lady Diamina, right? And am I wrong in thinking that the king is aware of this? He's aware of, like, what she was. Harnell may be able to assist as well. Yeah, you have no firm intelligence on whether he knows, but it's reasonable to assume that he would know. Right. Well, I mean, if we bring it up to him that perhaps his council members could potentially be working against him, could be spies, or just in general, weird milk plant people, he might be reasonable enough to you know give us the grounds that we need to so carry we, out this search. We, we, would, we would have to involve three people. Um, Har Arna? What's, uh, what's his name again? Harna. Harna, that's it. Harna, uh, Herrick, Herrick from the Bureau of State. Yeah, he, he, yeah. He, knows, he knows of this as well. Yeah. And of course, T uh, T Tithian needs to be at that present at, at that meeting then as well. See whether we can uh, then discuss it with them. Okay. Okay. And then I see, I'll see then in, in that meeting whether I can get that visit to the library fast track because three weeks, we don't have three weeks. And while you guys are having that conversation, Tim's going to grab an arrow and just cut his arm it bleeds red yeah just to show that it, he is in fact himself and Creodius offers her hand he <laughs> Tin hesitates for a second and is like and just does a scratch okay and he'll do it to anybody who you know offers out oh, you can I'm see injured, the is currently bleeding yeah we, we know you're the outside you. <laughs> yeah, you can see your insides. <laughs> he doesn't bleed red, he bleeds some weird kind of green. It's like very, yeah. very suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> He's one of their leaders. <laughs> so, Bagabagal and uh, Matthias, you likewise? Well, I'm already bleeding. Obviously, yeah, bleed red. yeah if, if they're already bleeding from the fight, then there's no reason to do it. But those of us that were not injured. Yeah. All right, so um, you share yourselves by blood, identify yourselves as not one of the, uh, well, the doppelgangers, whatever they are. Body snatchers. And we, um, we could pick up a couple of hours later in Tithian's meeting room. Hirik and Hana have been summoned. Tithian we, we, looks... We bring Rack, right? We bring the body. Okay, yes. right. Yeah. And both... So both Sorry, go ahead, Dwarf. I was going to say, um, when everybody's in there, before anybody says anything, he's going to say, do you remember uh, what Lady Diamina became? Tithian looks a little bit confused. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, would Harness would says, each of, would, would you trust me to test something very quickly? Uh, you're referring to that, that white... Yes. Tithian rolls up his sleeves, 
and reduces a, a long silver dagger and slices along the side of his wrist. As red as the crimson sun. I was not going to cut you quite so much, but thank you. Um, anyone else? Hana and Herrick both offer their wrists and, and bleed red. And I'll just, yes, it's just a scratch, just enough to draw a bead. What is this? He points at the body of, uh, of Rack, which I presume you've dumped on the meeting table. Mm -hmm. It's Templar Rack. Rack? Yes. He's in my bureau, Hana says. Yes. We uncover the body and show the white fluid. Yeah. He's also a doppelganger, and he was providing information to Ulrich. Another one. We it was not him. an isolated incident. We actually caught him alive. Well done, Herrick says. He's dead now. Outstanding work. Oh. Thank you, Constantine. I knew we could, re we could rely on you. I, d I did nothing. It was the team. I told you. It's got the right stuff. Partner just nods. Well, this is as I feared. We have been infiltrated. There is there is something else which uh, worries me about this whole conspiracy. It doesn't add up. <clears throat> At first, we thought it was involved with uh, the spies from Yurik, but it's on both sides. Yes, Jithian says. One of the other city states, I'm perhaps. I don't know. Do you know what this is? What I have is no. I have no idea. <laughs> no. Can 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 I ask permission to have fast tracked? Uh, maybe that we go for some research in the royal library on these things. I believe you are of sufficient rank to access any of the uh, palaces and temples of the Golden City, Templar Caradius. Okay. Please do your due diligence. I don't know whether I will find out anything, but I will certainly try. And I also recommend we start testing people in your cabinet and high-ranking officials that are involved. <laughs> are you looking to cause a second revolution? Well, I don't know what these things are, but I don't know who's so side. bring each, each member in for personal audience. You command them. He's right, Majesty, Hana says. Wasn't there an old tradition, or depending on city-state, uh, where basically you would shed uh, some blood for the regent or king <sighs> to show fealty? Ah, an there, oath of loyalty to the new there king. Is an, yes, there is an old precedent for that, Hana says, but it will upset people. Not as much as it will upset me being stabbed in the back by one of these, Tithian <laughs> says. Outstanding idea. I shall have each one of the members of the Council of Advisors swear personal loyalty to me, and this will be, yes, it will be a blood oath. Excellent. Also, if you're concerned about their overall demeanor, it could also be an oath to the city of Tyr if you don't want to ruffle the wrong feathers doing this in mass to so many people. Much better. Well, idea. perhaps I might have uh, my champion gladiators on hand to uh, lend a bit of. Um, Shall we say persuasion to the uh, to this to this to the proceedings? I understand you've been doing a good job of threatening Mintha, Freydlav, and Tirthani alike, eh? He looks at Bengal Bagal and Tick Tick. You've really shown your value today. I just stare at him, <clears throat> unmoving. <laughs> <laughs> you know. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's a compliment, Tithian says. It's, well, it's what your gladiators like, isn't it? You really think that little of us? No, I'm sorry. Have I, have I offended you somehow? Uh, the, the rush of the blood sport. I thought that was all, um... Just stop talking. As you wish. As you wish. Well, I will make the necessary arrangements then, and I thank you all for your uh, fortuitous advice. 
Do you wish to leave this in the... Well, um, I did try to state. tell you that this, when we captured him, was alive. There was a power that came afterwards that killed him while we were in the room. He was a psionic. killed psionically with the way, yes. And he said, Masters. Masters? Yes. But to kill a creature like this over great distance requires... Yes. Yes, very well. I am heading back to the, uh, to the Golden Palace, and I will give this matter some thought and have the oath of office uh, administered in the morning. We should need to just get this council up and running and use this as a pretext to... Uh... I, I, I would like to take some samples with me to the... Yes, of course, go ahead. Uh, what is um, the matter with the Minthors is uh, settled, I understand. They've been discussing with us today the arrangements for handing over troops and the Tirthani likewise. I'm not quite sure what you did to them. Um, this matter of Turax's uh, inquiry still ongoing very well we can delay that for another day or two but uh, no more especially not seeing as he removed two of his most vocal supporters Tia thanks you once again we'll return to your homes or in your case uh, Carodius to the library and uh, you can consider yourselves to have discharged your duties admirably well done you've made Tia proud Good night. And he turns to Harrick. Now, about that uh, ambassador from the guard, we need to... So you clearly forgot him almost immediately. <laughs> I take my samples uh, uh, of the bodily fluids and the tissues, um, maybe some of the hairs, I don't know. And... Um, yeah. Take it along to the library. Okay. And the rest of you head back to... Um, to Casa Matthias? I'll go and do what I messaged you earlier. Oh. Uh, all right. So Matthias um, has a meal set on for you and then um, departs to uh, attends to personal matters. Okay. I want to see if I can find Rikus. You're going to go ahead off looking for... Well, it'll be best to look for him in the morning, but... Uh, oh, okay. Well, whenever it's... Yeah. Tin's not going to sleep that night. He's kind of just holding the pouch, um, kind of twirling it in his hands. Kind of. Tic Tic's very it. excited to have companionship during the night. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and he's just you're not staring sleeping off into the distance. <laughs> Which pouch is this? The one he put the ring in. Oh, okay. All right. Bengal, Bengal. What about you? You're going to stay up staring into the darkness with the other two, or uh, oh, eat, eat yourself sick from uh, Matthias's table. Honestly, I would love to just spend all night with Tick Tick and Constantin, but I will. Have... <laughs> I'm gonna go and. We're so much fun. Um, we're so yeah. party. We're he the says best. they're staring. Yeah. The Joy, did you did you say you were gonna go wash your hair? Retire. Oh, okay. I thought it was hair. Okay, fine. No, this is me swinging my dreadlocks. All right. Ah. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you settle yourself down in the lounge. Normally, it's been the fact that Ra has the other sofa, uh, but she's been off for several days now, working with the farmers on getting the getting the various land situations back up and running. And well, the old big sofa looks quite empty for a, for a while. And you realise you've never been without it for this long, almost three days now. Oh, by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so lonely. <laughs> Lonely. I just look up at the moon and I'm like, I hope she's looking at it too. <laughs> Finally, I'm a... I mean, you realize realise it's actually not her, it's just Tick Tick. Yeah. Wait, she can't even... <laughs> <laughs> and Tin's just staring at a bag. <laughs> Carodius, for you, the evening is spent in the libraries of the kings. Great concentric rows of bookshelves. Templars walking hushed between the rows as you begin your search for knowledge. Piling books high, candles spread about in front of you, delving back into the ancient history of Tyr and the mastery of the way that would be required to both create such a thing and snuff it out. 
Matthias, you return to your room late. Uh, yes, okay. Um, send me that note, please, uh, as, as necessary, please, Carl. Matthias, you return to your room late. The others have finally settled down after having uh, eaten you half out of house and home, although that might just be Magal Magal. And as you doff your uh, your cloak, I'm expecting a visit. Yeah, he's already in the room waiting for you. He has a hand crossbow, an expensive piece of kit, cradled in his lap and pointing at you. Matthias. Yes. Do you want this the easy way or the hard way? Well, why is there even an option? Professional obviously, courtesy. Obviously, I know who so, sent you. Of course. I will not uh, lie to a fellow colleague. You think he's uh, an elf? Very tall, very thin. Features desert brown. Hair, however, cut short against his head, unusual for one of the elves. You never met him before. We are professional men. You levied an insult against the lord of a great house. By the ancient traditions, he sends you a bard. I expected as much. Shall we? If, if you turn away, I will put the bolt into the back of your head and it will be over. Oh. I wasn't going to lay down like that. Not the easy way, then. No. And within a second, he's on his feet, <coughs> the bolt firing toward you. Uh, why don't... <coughs> As I expected him, do I get anything on that? Or why don't you give me an initiative roll? Okay. Okay. Uh, nine. <laughs> Plus his hand crossbow. Eight. What do you get, Matthias? You got an eight. What do you do? I whip the crossbow out of his hand. Okay. Into and my hand. Into your hand. Okay, CMB is... I wrote this down somewhere. Uh, 10, 16. Oh, what do you get for the CMB check? I got yes, 25. okay. Um, oh, sorry, CMB 16, which makes CMD 10 plus that 26 plus dex 30. So, no, you failed to disarm him. Yeah, CMB, CMD of 30, that's your target. Um, oh, hang on. Um, CMB 16, CMD considerably higher. Uh, and then the offhand, he, I trip him. Oh my god. Oh god. He spins the dart behind him, sidesteps the whip, and fires from behind his back. That was a seven. That hits armor class 17. Misses. Uh, your armor class is 20, right? The dart whistles behind your head and buries itself in the wall. What do you do? Um. I will fire two darts at him. From your from your uh, mm -hmm. darts from your blowgun? Yes, poisoned. You snap it to your lip and <laughs> his armor class is twenty. Du, du, du. <sighs> Come on. He dodges the first. Second one, however, just catches him across the cheek. Um yeah, minus six to save. Minus six. Straight D20 gives you a result of 13. That goes down to a seven, goes up to a nine because of his bonus. And where are we here? Rogue. The seven over him is actually an 11, so that's a fail. Cool. How much damage is that? Um, it is... Uh, 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 38. 
38. Whoa, nice. Okay. Um, he uh, whips the dart out of his cheek, but not before the poison has been delivered. Staggers sideways. Ah! Rolls across the room towards you. Actually does a tumbling roll past you. And as he rolls past, he throws two darts sideways. And obviously in slow motion. <laughs> Armor class 22 and armor class 27. Ouch. Uh, and those both hit you. Okay, first off, that is uh, 4, 5, 13, <coughs> 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 damage from the darts. Okay. That leaves you on 19 hit points. And can I have two saving throws against poison, please? Oh, God, it's poison both. Uh, uh, against poison, um, there is plus four on these rolls. Uh, 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 oh, that's a pass. pass. Um, it, it, what else goes on that? It's constitution, isn't it? Uh, no, it doesn't. Not until you have very, very high comp. Oh, okay. So stamina adjustment doesn't, okay. And a 16. Okay, you bat the darts away as they hit to the floor. You can feel the burn of venom in your veins. Uh, where are we here? Um, thankfully, it's not enough to do any, any damage, but you realize this is probably some kind of lethal poison. Those are two save versus poison or die. Well done for saving a bunch of those. Um, what do you do next? You are sorely injured. I call out for Tick Tick and I fire twice again. <laughs> okay. Go for it. Armor class 20. Take, take you here, uh, Matthias, shouting. <laughs> Do I roll uh, initiative? Oh, you have to you're, say, I'm awake. I want to. You're on coming next round. On. Really? You slump sideways against the, the fine hangings in your bedroom. <laughs> Both darts. They don't even come close. He's just kind of walking towards you now. <clears throat> uh, darts dropped and <laughs> balls, pulls a, uh, a bone blade. And in front of you, takes the time to squeeze venom along its length. Can I move away? They won't get here in time. You know that, don't you? Can I rapid retreat out to the you're gardens? Gonna try and, you're gonna, f f yeah, okay, so you pull yourself to your feet, blunder past him. He flicks the blade after you, but got you're moving too quickly. I got rapid quickly. retreat. Yep, yeah. and you stumble out into the, gardens, uh, into the gardens beyond. You're probably actually on your balcony upstairs. Um, tick, tick, uh, Constantin, um, Bagal Bagal, you might have heard this as well, unless you were fast asleep. Um, you see him stagger out onto his balcony up above, bleeding from a number of wounds. Uh, tick Tick, uh, you arrive there first. Initiative rolls from anybody who's involved, please. He, and he's, on do, a, do we see this figure? I'm a five. You don't, you don't, see, any, you don't see any figures. Uh, Constant on a five. Bagal Bagal on a three. And Tick Tick. Oh, a quick question. How long would it take to run inside, up the stairs, and into the room in question? Is that that'll, something I that'll, can... That'll take your full move. My full move, okay. Yeah. And how... And <clears throat> I could jump onto the balcony in, as, as a move, as a combat move? Or is that my whole thing? You could jump onto the balcony as your combat move and then attack. Okay. So run, for you, running in through the house... For the others, running through the house is the only option. As a queen, you can actually just leap onto the balcony. Okay, I will leap what's onto your, the balcony. What's your initiative? Well, then, that, that I guess um, it is. I see a nine, a twelve with your yes. Okay, right. They're not going to get here in time. The bard has said. We shall see, uh, Matthias. What was your initiative? Ah, oh, let me do that. Hang on. Is combat mind still working? <laughs> no. That's terrible, Lee. That's terrible. You're muted, I know. Sir. Yeah, okay, okay uh, Bagal Bagal, it will take your full move to run through the house to reach uh, to reach his bedroom at the top. Is that what you're doing, or do you have something else in mind? Uh, yeah, unless there's an easy way for me to get out there. If I have to run through the whole house, then I will. Uh, you have acrobatics, don't you? Yes. You can make me an acrobatics roll. In fact, you don't need to make the roll. No, you do, because it's a penalty. Make me an acrobatics roll at minus five to uh, leap up the uh, the kind of trellis outside just after Tick Tick. But he, right. you, can, you can already see him bunching for a, a cream leap. 
Is nice. it too late to yell, tick, tick, take me with you? <laughs> uh, no, you're next. He's still in bunching mode. Um, Miguel, Miguel. <laughs> You, sh you shimmy up the uh, trellis outside, hand over hand, just like climbing the vines and trees of your forest uh, home. You can see uh, Matthias has staggered out onto the, the balcony. Uh, he doesn't look in a very good way at all, peppered with a number of small injuries. Just inside his room, walking toward him, holding a long bone blade that glistens wetly in the moonlight, is a tall, dark-skinned elf. Right, am I allowed to take a action like a, yes a yes you can um the uh seeing you arrive the elf just looks at you and says stay out of this i've no need to kill you as well tough shit and i'm gonna move my sonics i'm gonna try at least come on ballistic attack yes, yes. okay right so a d6 please a d6 yeah that's for damage yep automatically okay. hits Oh, damage. yeah, okay. Um, ballistic attacks, psychokinetic force slams into his chest. He staggers backward, blood spurting from the corner of his mouth. You've actually dealt him a solid blow with that. As nice. you wish, then. One more dead body for the pile. Constantine, um, you're, you set a tick-tick to, uh, to take you with him. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. So I'm holding to see what tick-tick does. All right. Um, the bard lunges for you with the bone blade, uh, Bagal Bagal. Aww. Natural one. Ha <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, you flatten yourself against the ground, <laughs> flicks nothing but empty air. Matthias. Um, I whip the blade. Uh, Sorry, go on. Yep, go ahead. Uh, try to whip the blade out from under him, from, from him. C CMD 30. I don't know if I can even get that. Uh, he's I've got, I've dancing. I've got to get a nat natural 20 to get that. Yeah, uh, if you remember, Aldrich uh, decided to run into this problem um, at a certain yeah. point. Uh, you lunge for him. He dances, pirouettes, keeping the blade well away from your whips. No, we know all about your tricks. I'm more than prepared for what you have up your meager sleeves. And um. Tick Tick, finally... Constantine grapples on your back and you leap through the air. Boing. I'm at the front of combat. That's a 30. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You are. Uh, with, your, with your main hand, crack, you just finally managed to nick him around the wrist and the bone blade goes sailing in a random direction. Uh, I even have a table for it right here, which I'm going to use. Uh, it flies direction number nine which is straight ahead and over the balcony, um, landing a dozen feet away in the street. A look of shock comes over his face. Oh, you're Whoa. good. And then tick, tick, boing! <laughs> With Constantine on his back, lands on the balcony next to him. Ah. Oh. I attack him full force. Yes, go for it. Uh, he has armor class 20. Okay. If he's uh, still alive after that, Jesus. I'm going to start with a bite. Yep. Poison this. <laughs> 26. Okay. This um, is one, safe. two, three, four, five. Not sure why it's rolling d20 twice to me there. But that first one was a natural 20, which is a save. Uh, and give me damage then for all those attacks. Okay, so the bite, and then one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. Right, firm to the, th the, the, the bite and the third, the third set of claws drops him. Uh, f throat completely torn out, collapses to the ground, judders once or twice, and lies still. I decapitate him. Hey, and then you pull his head clean off. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe you don't do that, but... You That's know, Tic Tic has a type. He's just like, <laughs> it's it's insurance. These things tend to get up again. Yes, no, it's and it's it's a signature move. It's yeah. Signature <laughs> move. <laughs> and besides, I had two attacks left after I killed him. Yeah. Go Tic Tic. Go Tic Tic. 
uh, after doesn't the head's ripped off, Tin's gonna put an arrow into him. Just and he's just gonna. <laughs> I just wanted to feel like I did something. At this point, Tick Tick turns around and is like, you, "Why? Why are you on my back? <laughs> <laughs> How do you think I feel? I'm back there, and you're going." La, 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 la. <laughs> it's like riding a rodeo. <laughs> well, it doesn't take you much guessing to figure out where the bard came from. Oh, I know. Was it uh, House you, Tier? Hang on, you're asking? Tier. Tier Thani? Tier Thani. That's the one. Yes. So do they just send more? Or... No. I will return the favor. By tradition, if the bard fails, he is to expect one from you. Um, I immediately um, look through the body see if there's anything interesting I, if there's anything that looks like might, it might be toxic I'm not touching it yeah there's several little pouches and powders yeah no I'm not touching that <laughs> any of those okay. um, I will take them but like coins or yes I will send you a little list uh, yeah. in discord chat of the things that you find and also okay. um, uh, I saw a request for a list of stuff that Rack had as well yeah, yeah, because they're I'll currently in my person. I would like to know them. I'd just like to note for the record that I'm really happy he had his attack before I landed. Yeah. I was panicking that he'd end up killing Bengal. Would I poison. That would have been poetic, yes. Oh, but you've that. enjoyed then a couple of days of politicking in Tyr. The progress of the army has been advanced. You have made friends of the Minthors, the people responsible for Nissa's death. You have impoverished the Freydlav family, but I've received messages from two characters who've been taking steps to remedy that particular wrong. At long last, Templarak is dead, or is he? Was he ever even Templarak? Don't say mm -hmm. that. And in answering on that final point, we close with Corodius. The sunlight filters through the window of the library, you realize you've been up all night. But you have a name. You have found two names. It is called an Elan, E-L-A-N. A psionic construct that can be made to appear however its creator desires. And there is only one group capable of mustering the power to create such a thing. They're never referred to as anything other than obliquely, but appear mentioned here and there through the journals of the Sorcerer King as a group to be feared. A reclusive band of Sarnacists known only as the Order. What they want with the wars between the city-states we will address on a later date. You sit back in your chair to contemplate what this must mean for your city. 